straight year. The Sabercats hosting the Chicago Rush. Winner goes on to the Arena Bowl. Matt DeRazio, the quarterback for Chicago, has back issues. How will he play? How will these voracious fans in San Jose treat Chicago? The trophy's on the line. We go inside the game. How we play fierce football the whole 60 minutes. That's about you, man. That ain't about coaching. The only thing about coaching right there is being able to recognize that special trait in every single one of you. For 60 minutes tonight, all I ask you guys, be great, because you are. Let's get a hand. Yeah, yeah, be great. Boy, all night long, all night long. Be great. Hard and fast, all night long. All night long, take the fight to him, all night long. Because the time in a man's life, you gotta step up and be accountable for it. And tonight is the night. presentation of Russell Athletic Arena Football, the conference championships. The stage is set here at the HP Pavilion, the Chicago Rush, the defending Arena Bowl champs, taking on the San Jose Sabercats. One ticket to New Orleans has already been punched, and it is an upset as six-seeded Columbus has run the table on the road in the National Conference, taking out the Georgia Force by 10, 66 to 56. They're going to New Orleans for Arena Bowl 21. The winner of this game this afternoon will meet Columbus for that title. Hi, everybody, and welcome into San Jose. Glad you're here with us. Trey Wingo and Mark Slareth. And Mark, it's deja vu all over again in this conference, the American Conference. It was in this building a year ago. At this time, San Jose and Chicago met for the right to go to the Arena Bowl. Chicago pulled off the upset. They beat San Jose. And suddenly, this rivalry has become completely one-sided for the Chicago Rush. It certainly has. You look at this, the Sabercats won the first four games in this rivalry. The last four games have been won by Chicago. And as a matter of fact, three of the last four years, these two teams have got it on for the right to go to the Arena Bowl. They don't like each other, they respect each other, but this has become a rivalry very much like the Indianapolis Colts and the New England Patriots of the National Football League, where New England dominated for a time, and then Indy, over the last few years, has really caught up to them. So this is what's going on right now with these two football teams. Yeah, the Colts have won the last three games against New England. Let's bring in two combatants who will be on the field tonight. That'll be Bobby Scipio, the wide receiver for the Chicago Rush, and Cleveland Thomas, the defensive back for San Jose. Bobby, what is it about this matchup that has produced four straight wins for you guys? I don't know, man. I can't call it. You know, we just we got an awesome team, awesome coaches, and we just come out to play football, man. What's your confidence level right now, Bobby? Uh, hey, we just, our confidence level within each other right now, man. We just coming to play what we do, do what we do, man, and just play team football. Lee Van, did you guys want Chicago? Did you want to play them in the championship? I mean, it really doesn't matter because, you know, they're a great team, and I feel that we're a great team. And whoever wins going to win the Arena Bowl, I feel so. It really doesn't matter to us. What's, what, what's going to be the difference, Cleveland, for you guys to stop the four-game losing streak this afternoon? Man, just finish, man, and have fun with one another, man. That's all. Have fun and enjoy the game. All right, guys, both of you enjoy the contest. We'll talk to you throughout the game. Bobby Scipio and Cleveland Thomas. Listen, there's a couple of issues you need to know about going into this contest. The quarterback to the Chicago Rush, Matt DeRazio, has a very tender back. He is going to start. We don't know how long he may play in this game. But, Mark, the guy that the San Jose Sabre gets count on taking out the opposing quarterback has taken himself out of this contest on the huge 
stage of the conference championship game. Ron Jones has been suspended. Disciplinary action, actions. Coach Arbett has come out and said, listen, you're not going to get to play. And when you're talking about Ron Jones, you're talking about second team, all AFL, and you're also talking about a seven-sack guy. So Kendrick Off is going to replace him. Big shoes to fill in a championship environment championship game. All right, Kendrick Off is coming in. Did play a little bit for the Buffalo Bills in the NFL. We are set for the kick. San Jose won the toss. They deferred to the second half, and we are underway here in San Jose. Jonathan Ordway takes it off the nets, takes it outside, and is met down at the six-yard line. Marquise Floyd making the tackle, and that is where the Chicago Rush and Matt DeRazio, you see him sort of gingerly walking onto the field, will step up and the offense will get underway. Mark, you know pain, you know what it's like to play with a tender back. What is Matt Durazio going through right now? Well, right now, this is the tough part. When you're in the huddle, you're just coming out there, you're very tender, you've got to get the adrenaline of the game going, you've got to get into the flow of the game. Once that ball is snapped, he's not going to think about it. But between the snaps of that football, it is going to be very painful and very tough to fight through. Molden is the motion receiver for Chicago. Durazio straight back and great job on the line by George Williams to bat it down, but we've got a flag on the play. Let's listen to Perry Hanover. All right, we'll try and get the mics worked out, but it's offsides on San Jose, so it'll be five easy yards set up now for Matt DeRazio and company as they move the ball across the 12-yard line. Well, they will begin a first and five. Throughout this broadcast, you might hear a sound in the background, and you're saying, what to yourself is that? Those would be cowbells that they allow the Sabercat fans to bring in, and they ring them all game long. First and five now. Scipio in motion out in the flat. And DeRazio hits him right in the breadbasket, and Scipio just flat out drops it. Here now the timeline of what has gone on for the Chicago Rush. The Arena Bowl champions in 2006, they snuck into the playoffs with a 7-9 record. Bobby Scipio, despite missing almost four full games, 53 touchdown receptions to lead the AFL. And both these teams play great defense. The Rush led the NFL in points, AFL in points allowed and takeaways. Second and five now after the drop. Grazio, plenty of time. Going deep for Scipio. He's open. He's got that one. And they rule it incomplete. Wow. Omar Smith coming in closing fast on that. But Mark, I'm not sure he didn't have possession of that ball. Yeah, you look at him, he goes down. When he hits the ground, it looks like that's what causes the ball to come out. But I think he had possession right here. Hits the ground. And then the ball comes out late as Smith hits it out of his hands. I think that's a missed call right there. Great effort by Smith. Not giving up when you've been beaten. But I think they got away with one there. We should point out there is no replay in Arena Bowl or in Arena Football. That sure looked like it was a completion and maybe a touchdown. So now third and five for Durazio and company. Going for Scipio again. And this one he throws too long. And it's picked off by Cleveland Thomas. but we have got a flag back where DeRazio was hit. It may be a roughing the passer, and if that's the case, Mark, what a huge break for Chicago. Absolutely a huge break and a turn of events. Looks like a hit that just way late. Let's listen to Perry Hanover. It's a personal foul against Allen Harper, defensive lineman. See if we can take a look at it here. Personal foul. Well, there it is. On the interception return, they called him for the block against the quarterback. Yeah, and you know what? That's one of those things where you're trying to you're trying to put the quarterback. You know he's hurting a little bit, but that's a little bit too aggressive right there, and that's something that's kind of outside the unwritten rules. Huge, huge mistake after the interception, but well, the Sabercats get the ball. Because it was after the interception. Right. That's a very good point. 
So now the Sabercats pick it up first and ten from their 12-yard line. Ben Nelson goes in motion for Mark Grebe, and Mark Grebe looking for Nelson right away, and he can't connect. And Mark, it seems like we have a couple of great quarterbacks in this contest, and Mark Grebe and Matt D'Orazio, both of them seem a little bit off their rhythm right now. Well, you know, a little bit of jitters right now. This is a big game. Everybody understands the magnitude of this game, but let's, but let's face it. These are two very good defenses in this league right here, ranked one and two in defense and points allowed, so you're going to expect some of that. There's a reason these two defenses are one and two in points allowed Chicago being number one. More on that in a second. Second and ten as Nelson once again, the receiver in motion. Grebe with plenty of time. Looking for Rodney Wright and Rodney trying to rail it in with one hand. It's incomplete but the flag goes down. They're going to call that one on Jonathan Ordway. And Mark, when you look at arena football, so much of it is geared toward the offense. But really, the reason these two teams are playing in the conference championship it is because of their defenses. Again, that's Perry Han over the referee. His mic is not working. They're calling the interference uh, right there on Jonathan Ordway. But back to yeah. the defensive point. There's no question about that, Trey. And when you look at these two teams, you talk about defense first, and that's kind of unheard of in this league. But this league is about possession. And if you can get extra possessions for your offense, then odds are you're going to win games. And that's why you're looking at Chicago Rush at 12-4 at in the regular season and the Sabercats at 13-3, two of the best teams in this conference. In arena football, it's not a Spot foul, it's a yardage foul on that, so they get the first down, and Mark Grieve hits James Rowe, and James Rowe making a reception in the postseason should not surprise you. After all, he's the AFL's all-time leading receiver in terms of catches, yards, and touchdowns in AFL postseason history. As for the San Jose Sabercats, they started the season 13-3, and, and then they said enough of that, they won 11 straight to win their division. Mark Greed, their amazingly intelligent quarterback, 100 touchdown passes on the year. And this is a team that has won two arena football championships in 2002 and in 2004. First and 10 now. Greed going deep, looking for Nelson. And great coverage there by Jeremy Yanertle. And Yanertle goes over the wall to break it up. You know one of those defensive backs, second all our second all AFL team, and he's one of those guys, as Reeve told me, has great angles, great anticipation on the football, really knows what he's doing, and basically baits you into some throws. And in the last three games that you Nerdle has faced Grieve, he's picked him off four times, so he's had his number a little bit, Trey. Well, I think that's why he's saying nice things about him. He doesn't want a fifth. Second and ten now. Grieve again with time goes over the middle. Nelson wide open in the zone but he will be short, it appears, of the first down. Dennison Robinson there making the stop for Chicago. Mark Grebe, we mentioned his intelligence. Well, let's just say I think he has a fallback career when his playing days are over. He graduated from UC Davis with a biochemistry major. And just for fun, Mark, while he was playing arena football, he went ahead and got his master's degree from Stanford. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Yeah, uh, many you know, of the Broncos we, that you played yeah, for had that all, same resume, We've all right? done that, right? We've all gone there. All right, third and short. They give it on the middle inside to Matt Kinzinger, and he is stacked up well short. Joe Peters among those there meeting him. So right away, early on in the first possession for San Jose, they're going to have a choice to make, Mark. You know, it's a simple game. It really is. You control the line of scrimmage, and guess what? You're going to win more than you're going to lose. And right there, what you saw, the Chicago Rush controlling the line of scrimmage. And this is one of those situations right now you put, you put the team behind the eight ball. It's about possessions, and they're forcing this San Jose team to go. And on fourth down conversion rate for the season, San Jose number one in the league. He's got time. Got a man over the middle, but Ordway is there closing fast and breaks it up. And talk about a strange start as E.J. Bart was applying the pressure on Mark Grebe. We've had two possessions and we have zero scores. But then again, both of these teams play defense. Chicago coming back with the ball after this. When hot, molten rock, ash, and gases erupt. And escape from deep below the surface. It often results in a touchdown. For those who have what it takes on the inside, Russell has what it takes on the outside.
27 years ago, I stood right here and witnessed my very first 540 two-handed catapult slam. Went blind for two days. That's how powerful it was. Ooh. Oh, there it is again. Oh, hold up. Hold up. I'm blind again. Take it easy, little man. It's going to be all right. Knock it down. We're going to get through this together. NBA Street, on court. Ready to eat for everyone. We got it going on. ESPN's telecast of Russell Athletic Arena Football is brought to you by Russell Athletic. For those who have what it takes on the inside, Russell has what it takes on the outside. And in part by Arena Bowl 21 in New Orleans, Sunday, July 29th. Get jazzed. And by Arena Football Road to Glory in stores now. Back with you in San Jose, Trey Wingo and Mark Schlereth as the Chicago Rush and the San Jose Sabercats playing to a scoreless couple of first possessions. There's the head coach of the Chicago Rush, Mike Hohensee. 119 career wins, third most in AFL history, and of course, the coach of the 2006 Arena Bowl champions. There's some symmetry there, or symmetry there, because Columbus got into the playoffs this year at 7-9. They're playing in the Arena Bowl. Chicago got in the exact same way last year. Let's see if... Matt Terrazio and company can get something going here on this drive. First and ten. Throws it a little bit behind Jonathan Ordway. Almost picked off again by Cleve Van Thomas. Here now the U.S. Marines starting lineup. Starting with the Chicago offense. And Mark, whatever Chicago does goes through Bobby Scipio. There's no question about it. Bobby Scipio, one of the great ones in here. 6'3", 220 pounds of twisted steel, football appeal. He makes every play on offense. You just said twisted steel football appeal. Yeah, that's him, man. He is he is all day long, and let me tell you, big physical guy that can run, and he will make plays. Watch him, keep an eye on him. He is the go-to guy. Well, right now they go to twisted steel all the deal. Was that what it was? Uh, football appeal. Yeah, football appeal. Yes. You were up all night working on that one. No, I just made it up. Bobby Scipio there with the reception or twisted guy, as we're we'll calling from now on. Uh, let's take it. The U.S. Marines starting lineup for the San Jose defense, and there's the question mark. Kendrick Offense office on the defensive line replacing the sack master for San Jose, Ron Jones. Ron Jones, seven sacks, second team, all AFL, and Kendrick Office has got big shoes to fill. They're expecting him to come with some pressure and, uh, you know, lean on that two years of NFL experience with the Buffalo Bills that he has. First conversion for Chicago. Scipio throws it out to Ordway. Boy, just absolutely right through his fingers. We've seen Scipio drop one. We've seen Ordway drop one. We've seen Durazio, Mark, throw a really poor interception. The Rush are very lucky that they're not behind in this game already. Yeah, you know what? And we've talked about it. It's about possessions. The Rush have always get, already given one up, and they stood up on defense and got it back for them. But both these teams feeling each other out a little bit. There's some pregame jitters here. I expect things to start settling down and a real live AFL football game to break out any minute. Well, again, uh, defense has been the order of the day for both of these teams, and it's playing out right now. Second and ten from just before midfield. Going for six. Scipio deep, and this oh time Scipio hangs on and touchdown, Chicago. Cleveland <laughs> Thomas was there, and by the way, if Durazio does go out, they may want to have Scipio play quarterback because he just heaved one into the upper deck. Uh, My goodness. Bobby Scipio, as I told you, he is twisted steel. Football, Football appeal. appeal. He only needs one arm. Did you see that catch right there? He's got a he's got a defensive back hanging on him. He beats him, says, all right, I'll just stick one hand out here and catch it. Great hands, great size, great speed. I'm telling you what, this guy is one of the best, if not the best receiver in all the AFL. And boy, he hit the board hard there in the end zone. Dan France for the extra point. It is up and good. Ladies and gentlemen, courtesy of the words of Mark Flareth, enjoy a 26-yard touchdown catch from the twisted steel football appeal of Bobby Simeo. Chicago rushes out on top. Matt Durazio back on the bench after a successful drive. A 26-yard touchdown strike to Bobby Scipio. Has Chicago up 7-0. 
great catch by Scipio, but Mark, on the back end of this play, look at DeRazio's reaction. Boy, you can see his back is really hurting. Him. There's no question about it. Look at him limp off the football field. He's punched over right there. He's got the bulging disc in his back. He's got pain down his legs. Uh, that is so tough to play with, and I'm telling you, there's nothing about him that isn't tough right now. He's going out there battling for his team. He said, you're going to have to scrape me off the football field to take me out of this game. Just a week ago in the playoffs last week, he said before the game he didn't think he could go. He went, and he's given everything he got right now. France takes it off the Nets. Rodney Wright bobbles it. The ball is loose, and it appears to be covered by San Jose in the end zone, which means we will start on the five-yard line. Boy, that is what is so difficult about the kicking game for the arena game, Mark. You get those crazy bounces off the nets and the crossbars. The nets are live, the crossbars are live, and depending upon where it hits that net, obviously there's different uh, there's different places in the net. Some are soft, some are a little bit more taunt, and the ball is going to careen off there differently every time the ball hits the net, so you never know where that football is going to go. Omar Smith, uh, Johnny on the spot right there to make that uh, recovery and give San Jose possession of the ball. Mark Grieve with the throw, it is deflected right there, and we are seeing a lot of deflections and a lot of sort of hitches in the giddy-ups right now for both teams. Let's take a look at the San Jose offense with the U.S. Marines starting lineup, and you look at San Jose's offense, and James Rowe is the go-to guy. There's no question. He had 14 receptions last week. He's a guy that's got eight years of experience in this league. Mark Grieve's favorite target, James Rowe, just finds a way to get himself open and make big plays. And Rowe goes in motion now as it's second and ten, and Grieb looking for him, and plenty of cushion there from Dennis and Robinson allows Rowe to make the easy catch. It's a first down. Now taking a look at the U.S. Marines starting defensive lineup uh, for Chicago, and there's Jeremy Unertle, the player you mentioned earlier. Yeah, great angles on the football, really can bait you into a throw, then undercut it, make an interception, and he has picked off three or four times in the last three games. So you're going to see him coming to play here often. Also keep your eye on number 23 defensively, Dewan Alfonso. More on him later. First and ten, Grieve with lots of time. Nobody around him, and there's Alfonso finally saying, you are going out of bounds. I bring up Alfonso's name because if there is a definition of a ball hawk in the AFL, Mark, it is number 23 for Chicago. Iron Man guy, a guy that's always around the ball, and a guy that does a great job deflecting passes, reading coverage, getting in passing lanes, and then when the ball is in play, he can get out of that jack linebacker position out of the box and go make a play. He is a great, great football player. An all-arena player. He had five total defensive touchdowns this year, a new AFL record. He also had six fumble recoveries, tying the AFL record. Oh, by the way, throwing six interceptions on top of that as Just well. Just for fun. Yeah. Second down, Grieve trying to set up a screen to Rodney Wright, and who is it but Johnny on the spot? Duan Alfonso. Also making the tackle one more time. Now, you mentioned the Jack linebacker, and on that last run by Grieve, Alfonso sort of stood there and waited for Grieve to come to him. That's by the rules. Right, exactly. The Jack linebacker cannot leave the imaginary box that they say, which is, which, uh, which is right here. This is the box. It sits right in there. So what you've got to see here, you've got to stay in there. And once the ball leaves that area, now you can go chase. All right, third down now and a couple of yards for San Jose. Grieve over the middle, finds James Rowe, and he has got the first down as Janertel is there to pick it up right about the 16-yard line. And as we said earlier with the last drive in Chicago, it's about finally getting in a rhythm. You get the nerves out of the way. These two teams respect each other. There's a huge rivalry here, but all of a sudden things start to click a little bit. The offenses start to kind of catch up with the defenses and the emotion of the game, and now it's methodical. Now we're starting to drive. We've gotten a couple of first downs. Things are feeling a little bit better. Both sides of the ball are starting to settle down in a real AFL game. About to break out here, Trey. You're playing football now as opposed to thinking about who you're playing. Exactly. First and 10 from the 15, and going deep for Ben Nelson, and Ben Nelson has got it. This game is tied. Or one extra point away from being tied. Jonathan Ordway beaten on the coverage. And suddenly those cowbells we were talking about earlier that had been strangely silent, Mark, yes. are back into the picture. As they say, these fans have a fever and the only prescription is more cowbell. Mark Schlereth, ladies and gentlemen, a poet of the 21st century. A.J. Hagman, the rookie from Central Oklahoma, on to tie this game up. Kick is up. And 
and it is good. So thanks to Ben Nelson and a 16-yard touchdown catch, this game is tied. Nelson also hitting the wall, and remember kids, in arena football, the wall always wins. Back in San Jose, just over two minutes to play in the first quarter, thanks to a touchdown pass by Mark Reeb to Ben Nelson. 16 yards. This game has tied seven apiece. Jonathan Ordway set to return the kick for Chicago. We go in. Crowd getting into this one, Mark, and, and suddenly we've got the rhythm that you were talking about earlier as we get set for A.J. Hagman to kick this one off. And, See if Ordway can get something going. Well, defense is played with passion. You just fly around, try to hit people. Offense, you've got to have controlled passion, and it takes a little while to get that control as we get the kickoff. Right, Ordway takes it inside the back line of the end zone. Got a couple of blocks, makes one move, and gets out past the 12-yard line as Jason Gathers uh, takes him out to the sidelines there. And let's welcome into the telecast the quarterback for the San Jose Sabercats, Mark Grieve. Mark, it seemed like both Chicago and you guys a little bit out of your rhythm when this game started. Oh, uh, yeah, a little bit. You know, they uh, they did a nice job on third and fourth down in our first drive, and uh, I thought we moved the ball down the field pretty well, but then uh, sort of came up empty in the red zone. How important was it to get that second drive going where you made a couple of those first downs and sort of seemed like everybody got in the flow? Well, they're always important, but, uh, you know, it was, it was a good drive, and uh, hopefully that'll, uh, that'll start us going. What's it like to play these guys again in this stage in your building for the second straight year? Uh, well, you know, I think when you, you come to play them, you know you're going to play a team that's, that's well coached and going to play with a lot of passion, and, and they're doing that, and, uh, and I, we just got to match that and execute. Mark, we appreciate the time. We'll talk to you later on. All right, thanks. Mark Grieb, quarterback for San Jose, as Matt DiRazio completed that pass to A.P. Molden. The all-time receiving leader in Chicago Rush franchise history, by the way, rejoined this team uh, at the end of May, uh, and he's really stabilized that rotation to help Bobby Scipio. Yeah, early in the season with Vegas, had 61 receptions, comes here last few weeks, third 20 receptions for the Rush team uh, as he rejoined this football squad. Second and eight, and there is the man of the hour. Oh, and the ball slips out. It's picked up by Marquise Floyd, and Floyd is now inside the 10-yard line. My goodness. And look at Matt Ferrazio walking off the field. Mark, at some point, you have to wonder how much longer he can play basically bent over like that. Well, we've talked to him. He said the one thing we don't want is, or I don't want, I don't want to be selfish. And you know what? He's making the throws. That throw is on the money. That's nothing on DeRazio. But listen, man, at some point, if you can't give your team an opportunity to win with an injury, oh, and he oh just takes God. a huge shot, then at times you've got to make a move to the backup quarterback. And Matt DeRazio said we don't like to talk about Russ Mikna as a backup quarterback because he is a starter anywhere else. Well, you better get ready for Russ Mickman because if things go the way they're going, and Matt DeRazio is simply not getting the protection he needs. Listen into this last hit by Alan Harper on Matt DeRazio. Boy, he is in a lot of pain, but thanks to the turnover, San Jose set up in shop right now, threatening to score. This game is tied 7-7, Chicago and San Jose, second quarter coming up. When hot, molten rock, ash, and gases erupt, and escape from deep below the surface, Results in a touchdown. For those who have what it takes on the inside, Russell has what it takes on the outside. Rally started as an itch I had to scratch. 
I had no idea it was this contagious. Under My Skin, by me, Travis Pastrana. X Games 13, August 2nd through the 5th, live on ESPN and ABC. Presented by Taco Bell. Pardon. Excuse me. Sorry. How you doing? Oh, this? Chicken grilled taquitos. All white meat chicken. They're great on the go. Runners to your mark. Set. Did you guys run much? Whoa, what was that? Taco Bell's new chicken grilled taquitos. Marinated grilled all white meat chicken. Melted cheese, hand rolled and grilled to go with your choice of dip. For grilled all white meat chicken on the go, <laughs> think outside the bun. The U.S. Army Reserve takes a different kind of strength. The strength to help people one day and lead people the next. The strength to build confidence one day and build knowledge the next. The strength to improve your country one day and your career the next. The strength to be both a citizen and a soldier in the U.S. Army Reserve. There's strong and then there's Army strong. Find out more about the Army Reserve at GoArmyReserve.com. Start of the second half, Chicago and San Jose tied up at seven. Matt Durazio, Chicago rush quarterback, on the bench, obviously in a lot of pain, has already taken a couple of big hits. San Jose's got a second and ten from the 11-yard line. Let's bring in rush head coach Mike Owensey. Coach Owensey, how long can you let Matt go if he's taking big hits like that when he's out there? Not that long. I, I tell you what, we got to do a little bit better job protecting. I thought it was a little bit late with the hit right there. We have things downfield. We just got to be able to give us uh, some time to get it done. When uh, when Chicago comes back with the ball, will Matt be back on the field? Yes, he will. Uh, at what point do you have to judge what's best for the for the team as well as his determination and his his competitive spirit, Coach? Well, when he's he's unable to uh, perform out there, if, if he's uh, throwing the ball uh, inaccurately, he's making bad decisions, and he's worried more about uh, the pain that he's uh, experiencing, then you got to make a change. And Coach, how much confidence do you have in the backup, Russ Mickman? A ton of a ton of experience, a ton of uh, confidence in the kid. He does a good job. He's, he's a great study, and um, the kid, you know, he's been getting a lot of the reps the last few weeks because of. Uh, that's Coach, we appreciate the time. We'll talk to you later Thank on. Thank you. Uh, that play broken up by Jeremy Unertle. So this is exactly, Mark, what Chicago needs. Right before the end of the quarter, they got an incompletion. They get another one. So even though they've had two turnovers go against them, uh, it's still a third and ten situation here. Third and ten situation. Chicago's already gotten one stop. And right now they're leaning on this number one ranked defense. Some call it the best defense of all time. And right here they're making plays. Oh, Mark Grieb with plenty of time and a great throw. Ben Nelson absolutely grabs it as he threaded the needle, Grieb did, as Dennison Robinson had great coverage, Mark. Great coverage. That's one of those things where you've got coverage that long. You expect your defensive line to pressure Mark Grieb and make him get the ball out of his hands sooner than this. They did not get the pressure on there. Mark Grieb held on to the football for a very long time and finally found a place to fit it in there. And I'm telling you, that was thrown inside a milk carton because that was a tiny, tiny little window. And it picks up a first down. It looks like they've got their heavy package in, is a nice way of saying it for San Jose. They actually call it their fat package, Trey. There you go. Uh, you were nicer. You were not as nice as I was. It's Matt Kinsinger, who says he likes to emulate Jack Lambert. He grew up in West Virginia. Huge Steelers fan. Lambert would have been proud of that run. Nobody in his way, and he pulls himself into the end zone as San Jose takes their first lead of the game, 13-7. to Well, you bring in the fat package. Bring in the big guys, grease up the field, and let your fullback slide it right on in there. And that's what they did on that Matt uh, Kinsinger scoring easily untouched into the end zone. Part of that fat package was George Williams, 6'6", 314 pounds, lining up on the left side. They went right. The kick is up, and it is good. San Jose has taken the lead, 14-7. to A little fat, never hurt anybody. Sabercats buying that right now. D-Dub. 
13 minutes to play in the second quarter or the first half. San Jose up by seven. San Jose has had success. They won Arena Bowl 16 with quarterback John Dutton filling in for the injured Mark Reed. Two years later, Super Bowl 18, San Jose beat Arizona 69-62. Sabre got scored the winning touchdown with 30 seconds remaining in the game and held Arizona on its last drive. Reed, the MVP of that game. So this is a franchise that is well-versed in arena success, especially in the postseason. Jonathan Ordway takes it off the nets, gets past the five, and gets past the 10-yard line out to the 11 as Jason Gathers gathers him up. Do not forget, a couple of weeks from now, it's a winner-take-all finale of the arena football season as the Columbus Destroyers, who snuck into the postseason at 7-9, and nine, win the National Conference, taking out Georgia 66-56. Winner of that game takes on, or the, the winner of this game takes on Columbus, the Russell Athletic ESPN Arena Bowl, July 29th at 3 Eastern. All right, Durazio back in. Oh, my gosh. Hey, Mark, it's hard to watch him. He looks like a, an 80-year-old man no. walking up the line of scrimmage. No offense to any 80-year-old men. They're in great shape, but that back is absolutely killing him right now. And on first down, he tries to throw a quick out to Scipio, and George Williams is there. Mark, how much pressure, how much more pressure does this put on the offensive lineman for the Chicago Rush? Because they know they really can't have a guy lay a hand on him. I promise you, they're talking about it on their sideline right now, saying, guys, it is up to us. If we do not do our job, and if we do not keep pressure off of our guy, we are not going to win this football game. I guarantee you, it is a rallying cry right now right now with this Chicago Rush team. And you've got to understand, Bob McMillan, their fullback, is a big part of that. No! Second and 10 after the incompletion. Grazio with time, takes another huge hit. You can't quite get it to Scipio and Allen Harpin one more time applying the pressure. Time now for our EA Sports AFL scouting report, and it is on Matt Durazio. Yes, Matt Durazio, as you know, Trey, and as we've talked about, the back injury, that's something that we've got to look at right now. Overcoming that back pain, he's got to be great. He's got a tendency to hold on to the ball. That's why you're seeing some of these late hits. He might be better off just throwing it away, but his competitive nature, sometimes gets in the way and he wants to hold it to the very last possible moment to make a football play and you can't fault him for that Trey. Well that goes back to his college days. He went to Youngtown State. Jim Treschel, now the Ohio State head coach, wanted him to play tight end. He said no I want to play quarterback. So he went to Otterbach. Third and ten going deep one more time and can't quite get Rob Mager. Overthrows him. So now it sets up a huge fourth and ten situation deep in their own territory. And they are bringing out the kicking unit. Keep in mind, there is no punting in arena football. Basically, you either go for it on fourth down or you try a, a field goal. Yes. Some field goals are more legitimate tries than others. Right, exactly. Sometimes what you'll see is basically a little pooch squib kick down off the edge there and try to cover it and pin your opponent back deep toward their own end line. And this is a 53-yard attempt. I believe this might fall into the second category, and it's blocked. Blocked and it goes out of bounds. And for the moment, Chicago has dodged another bullet. But right now, San Jose is set up in great shape. And Mark, we're seeing the tide turn definitively against Chicago now with a couple of defensive stops and two turnovers. Well, anytime you've got to kick the long one, what do you have to do? You got to, to get the it. distance. You got to drive it a little bit lower. You don't see the height coming off the foot of the kicker. And good penetration. The hands up. The field goal gets blocked, and it's going to be San Jose's ball on the two-yard line with an opportunity to really kind of drive one of the nails in this proverbial coffin right here, Trey. William Obang stepping up and making the block. 6'7", 335 pounds, a hometown product, played his college football at San Jose. Last week, San Jose had two block point afters, and they have the blocked field goal tonight. Special teams excellent tonight so far for San Jose, and so is the running of Matt Kinsinger. Somewhere, Jack Lambert is loving this because the guy that emulates him has two touchdowns in this game. Well, we saw him warming up, Trey. We saw him taking those handoffs, and he is one muscular 
aggressive dude and one angry looking dude. So in that respect, he's a lot like Jack Lambert, who I got to meet when I was a kid. Got an autograph for Jack. He took out his teeth and snarled at me. That's exactly what uh, Kinsinger looks like. He's a big, strong, strapping kid, and he's running hard, and he's scored two touchdowns so far for the Sabercats. Also the snapper on kicks. Ladies and gentlemen, Craig Wheelahan, a name you might be familiar with from the NFL. A lot of years playing in San Diego. The kick is up and good. And just like that, it is 21-7. Special teams play leads to another touchdown. Matt Kinsinger, who had him as the offensive star of this contest. San Jose up by two scores, 21-7. Tuesday. We're going to win this thing this year. It's opening day. New season, new ball club. And for the boys of summer, the heat is on. The Yankees suffered their fifth straight defeat. Wheels are coming off your three mil investment, George. I am not paying Reggie Jackson to ride the bench. Let me do my job. Any relationship that goes like this all the time is no fun. I want you to trade me, Gabe. It's got to go like this. Deliver. The Bronx is burning. Now on Tuesdays at 10 on ESPN, presented by MasterCard. If you love living in the country, but hate what your country driveway does to your vehicle, you owe it to yourself to get the full story on the amazing DR Power Grader. The DR Power Grader easily attaches to your riding mower, utility tractor, or ATV to professionally resurface any gravel, stone, or dirt driveway. You have precise control of how deeply the carbide steel teeth scarify the surface. Loosened material fills in potholes and washouts, giving you a smooth driveway with almost no work. So why sacrifice your vehicle or spend hours repairing your driveway? Call right now and I'll send you this free DR Power Grader catalog and DVD. Call today, 1-800-796-4209. Learn how you can test the DR Power Grader for six months risk-free. Factory direct savings are now in effect, so call 1-800-796-4209. Online at drpowergrader.com. DR is professional power for homeowners. Back in San Jose, Matt Kinsinger has to be a happy man. Two rushing touchdowns, 21 straight San Jose points as the Sabercats leading Chicago 21-7. And as you look at Matt Durazio, the quarterback for Chicago, you have to wonder how much longer he can hang in there. A.J. Hagman kicking it off, and it goes wide of the nets, and that's a huge mistake, Mark, because that gives... Chicago, great, great field possession to start this drive. Yeah, outside of the nets, and the ball comes up to the 20-yard line. So right now, I mean, that's essentially uh, the equivalent of getting about the 40 in the outdoor game. So you've got great field position, open up the playbook, and you can attack the end zone right here. So very good for the Chicago rush. Here we go, here we go. Let's go now. Close left, Wingo. 30 out, Esco. First down, ready? 30 out, Esco, Mark. Yeah, 30 out and 30s are going to be a, a little three-step drop right here. But the Esco, you're going to look at Bob Magger here, number 11. He's going to go down the sideline for the touchdown. Clear, a little clearing route, throw it underneath. At, at to Molden there uh, with the catch. And as you see him look and whip around, Mark, at what point do you, as, a, as, a, as a, another player on the field, have to say, buddy, I don't know if you can do this. Well, you know what? As, if he continues to be inaccurate with the football and overthrowing guys and underthrowing guys, that's when you have to be concerned. But uh, don't be concerned with the way he's walking up there. It's when he has that ball and he snapped that football, what he does with it. That's where you've got to look. And if he can't be consistent with it, then you've got to make a change. They set up a little screen to Bob McMillan, but San Jose sniffed that one out as Jason Gathers absolutely was there for the stick. We, we talked to Jason on the field before the game. He told us, without question, he wanted to play Chicago after what happened a year ago. Let's listen to the huddle now to Matt Durazio. I don't know if you heard that. It, 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 it is loud here in when, San Jose. Well, wing, wing yo is Bobby Scipio in motion, and that's about all I got to hear right there. So we'll see what they come out with here. Well, I can't confirm that Scipio is in motion. They've got him. Oh, my goodness, right through his hands. And that's a perfect placement and a great ball. 
by DeRazio. So that's one of those things you look at and you say, even though he's walking around and looks so bad, that one he put on the money. So if I'm the coach, I'm saying, listen, as long as he's delivering like that off the back foot, but look at him lay that in. Perfect trajectory. And Bobby Scipio, you know, nine times out of ten, he'll come up with that ball every time. But just that time, he, he lets it slip through the fingertips. Three Scipio drops already. That is almost unheard of in one full game, let alone one half. Huge fourth down coming up, and we've got a timeout on the field. As they're trying to adjust something with Bobby Scipio's equipment. Now you look at the problems that they've had. We've seen the drops, Mark. We've seen the turnovers. When your quarterback is ailing, you don't have to be good. You have to be almost perfect, don't you? And part of that is when you know your quarterback's ailing, what do you do as a player on that football team? Oftentimes what you're trying to do is say, oh, my quarterback's hurt. I've got to do more than my job. Right. I've got to make something happen. And in doing that, sometimes you actually take yourself out of position to make your plays. You don't have to do more. You've got to be exceptional. You've got to catch the football. You've got to tuck it away and make plays after you've got the ball in your hands. Huge fourth down. Fourth and three. Can they keep the drive alive? Grazio again going for Scipio one more time. And that one not even close, Mark. And you have to wonder if the back is affecting those kind of throws. Because Scipio was open. Scipio was open right there. And you look at Grazio and you've got to come back to the sideline and say, okay, let me tell you something. Right now, can you make these throws? Can you get this done? Because one thing I know about Matt Grazio, he is not a selfish player. And if he feels like he can't make the throws, he can't settle into this football game, he'll take himself out of this football game. He does not want to be a selfish player and let's take a look at this throw off the back foot right there lays it in and as you mentioned Trey that was nowhere close and you've got to in this league come up with those throws yeah and taking nothing away from the San Jose defense they've done a good job but on that play Cleveland Thomas was beaten for a touchdown so Mark Grieve and company take over on first down Rodney Wright going in motion and Grieve looking for Wright and Jeremy Yanergo pick off number five in his career against Mark Grieve just what the doctor ordered Jerry, uh, Jeremy Unertle, and we talked about Jeremy Unertle being a guy that will set you up, make you feel as though you're wide open, and then undercut a throw. He's got great angles, great anticipation. And what a play by Unertle, one of the reasons he's a second-team All-AFL player. Basically, Jeremy saying, Matt, I got your back. Tibet, land of a thousand mysteries. Make that 1,001. Race car driver Casey Kane. Casey, why are you here living with a group of nomadic yak herders? Well, I was drinking vitamin water revive to recover physically, and I realized I needed to try to recover spiritually too. Here, we all work together, whether it's making yak butter or tanning hides, and we are not competitive with one another. Hey! Grant Johnson, thank you now! Kiki Jopomin do yak! Vitamin water, try it! I heard that. We'll leave the light on for you. This painting season, you've got a lot of stuff to paint, but not a lot of time. The Wagner Power Painter with innovative lock and go cartridges lets you go from staining to painting in a snap. Wagner, paint fast, paint smart. It is not just the strength of action. It's the strength of honor. Not just the strength to follow, but to lead. Not just the strength to push, but the strength to push yourself. It is more than physical strength. It's the strength to carry the things that weigh the most. There's strong, and then there's army strong. Find out more at goarmy.com slash strong. Stan Verrett here in the studio. We've got racing over on ABC, NASCAR's Bush Series running at Chicagoland Speedway. Jeff Burton in the lead right now, the race under caution for the fourth time this afternoon. But there's a trip to the Arena Bowl on the line in San Jose. Back to the rush in the Sabercats with Trey and Mark. All right, Stanley, thanks very much. Mark Grieve just throwing his fifth career interception to Jeremy Nerdle. 
I tell you, Mark, no surprise that Unirtle makes big plays. He had a big one last week. Yeah, Unirtle is one of those guys that studies the game. He understands this football game, and he bases you in the throws. He makes it look like you're open. He undercuts the throw, and a great job. And Mike Owens, he, the head coach of this Rush team, told us this secondary studies like none other. They understand the game, and man, oh man, it shows here. First down, and Scipio goes left. DeRazio throws it right. Cleveland Thomas has his second interception of the game, but he drops the ball, and Johnny on the spot. Number 94, Robert Boss is there to cover up. My goodness, another disaster averted for Chicago. Chicago had better thank their lucky stars right now because this game could be 35-7, to 7, it could be 42-7, to 7, and they've got an opportunity to get themselves right back in. A misread right here. Either a misread or a wrong route by Scipio. We don't know. I think it was an option. You've got a post-go option route right there. DeRazio thinking he's going to the going to the corner. Scipio goes to the post. And you've got Thomas right there. Johnny on the spot to catch the ball. The most unusual first down of the game. But first down it is. And Matt DeRazio throws another one as Marquise Floyd picks up the interception. And you have to believe at this point that the back is affecting the play of DeRazio because he has not played a game like this the entire season. Yeah, you would have to think that that back is killing Matt and um, and that, you know what, I mean, he's fighting through it, he's battling through it right now, but it's one of those situations right here where things just aren't going well. And, you know, I mean, that's not typical of Bobby Scipio either. You've got to work yourself open in the back of the end zone. You've got to make plays. Guys are being covered up right now. Matt's got tight windows to throw it in, but I'm telling you what, he does look like he's hurting. It's affecting him. Just so people understand, Chicago for the season number one in turnover margin, plus 26. San Jose was number two, but this is most unusual to see Chicago go this way. On the completion there, Mark Green to James Rowe. A little talking afterwards as he was run out of bounds, perhaps a little harder than James Rowe would have liked. But I tell you what, You've got to give San Jose credit for this because they're doing what they've done all year. They were number two in the regular season in turnover margin. Both these defense, very good, very opportunistic, forcing turnovers. And, I mean, this Chicago defense, it's amazing right now that this score is in a blowout, 21-7. to Chicago's got to stand up here and make another play. Before that completion, three straight interceptions, in case you were wondering. Set up a screen to Rodney Wright, and Rodney Wright is chased down from behind by John Moyer. He's going to be just a little shy of the first down, but still positive yardage. It'll bring up a second and one for San Jose. And Mark, here's where the last three plus minutes of this first half become critical because San Jose won the toss they deferred. They get the ball to start the second half as well. If they can score here, hold Chicago, and then score again to start the second half, then we do have that proverbial massive score we're talking about. On the completion there to Rodney Wright, they pick up the first down. But this is real danger time for Chicago. There's no question about that, Trey. With three minutes, just over three minutes left, you can score here. You're going to get, even if Chicago comes back and scores, you're going to get another possession, and you want to get that last possession of the first half because you know if you're San Jose, you're coming out and getting the ball to start off the second half. So you can get those two-to-one possessions, those three-to-one possessions right here in this case. Mark Grieve and company working their way down the field, just inside the 20. Scrambles to his left, and that one's just thrown away. Good coverage all the way around. Juan Alfonso in the coverage. Joe Peters, of course, applying the pressure. Again, the winner of this game moves on to Arena Bowl 21 in New Orleans. Columbus pulled the upset earlier today, knocking out second seed in Georgia, 7-19 for the second straight year in the regular season. It was Chicago a year ago. We'll play for it all in New Orleans. Winner of this game will be in Arena Bowl 21, Sunday, July 29th, 3 o'clock Eastern on ESPN on ABC. Second and 10 now is James Rowe. Crossing pattern over the middle. Janertle drives him out of bounds, but not before he picks up that first down as we are coming up on two minutes to play in the first half. I like what the Sabercats are doing right now. They're playing Calm their down, game. 
Yeah, play your game, throw some underneath routes, throw a few pick routes, get a little crossing, the shallow crossing routes. Let's just stay on rhythm. You saw a little quick screen out before for close to nine yards, and just moving those chains and getting into rhythm. Know you're not hustled here. Know you've got time. And working the clock in their favor as well. So first and ten from the 13-yard line. Grieve with time, throws it to Ben Nelson. Juggles it, but still manages to make the catch. And your Nurdle there one more time to uh, ride him out of bounds. It seems like they're going after your Nurdle a little bit here, Mark. Well, you know what? Your Nurdle plays that tough position in the middle there where he's covering the motion receiver most of the time. And oftentimes, the middle of the field is the most open part. But as I said, your Nurdle will give you some catches. He's going to make some catch. He's going to make some tackles on those catches underneath. But eventually, he's going to bait you and be able to get to the football. All right, Chicago has called a timeout. It is their first charge timeout of the first half with one. 28 to play and that's coach Ho really working the clock uh, to figure out listen if they're going to score we're going to need some time to try and get one more score back before the end of the first half exactly you've got that one minute war warning and, and in once inside one minute and we've got 28 seconds till we get there then the clock stops like it would for anything out of bounds plays the clock will stop on incomplete passes and there you see Russ Mikna, Russ Mikna rather, the back of the quarterback from Chicago warming up. Uh, that might be an indication of where this game is going, the quarterback slot for the Chicago Rush. All right, take a look at the last three Arena Bowl champions. 2004 it was Mark Grieve and the San Jose Sabercats defeating Arizona 69 to 62. In 05, it was Colorado. Clay Rush drilling a 20-yard field goal as time expired to give them a 51-48 win. And just last year, in front of over 13,000 fans, Matt Durazio, the MVP, 26 of 36, as Chicago won 62 to 47, clinching the Arena Bowl title for the Rush. Second down now, Grieve throwing one deep, back and over the middle, and it is caught for the touchdown, and suddenly, Bill Glover has made it a three-score game for San Jose. Things beginning to unravel. Bill Glover, basically a linebacker. They use him occasionally out of the backfield. This was a very good occasion. Yeah, a perfect occasion, and Phil Glover, they call him filthy, and he goes up right here. Look at that catch. Concentration, one foot in, and then the defender knocks him out of bounds. Look at everybody's excited, and they know. They know the significance of going up like that. Well, if you're wondering how Phil Glover was able to maintain his balance on that great catch right there, what, what sport do you think is the most important when it comes to balance? Sport do I think is most important? Uh, how about grappling? A little wrestling? You that gotta is, be. You've got to have great balance, great leverage. That is correct. He was a state champion wrestler in the state of California. That's how he was able to maintain that balance. The kick is up and it is good. 28 to seven. That has taken us to the one minute warning in the first half. It is all San Jose right now. They lead the rush. 28 to seven. The halftime report coming up in just a minute. We've got the players of the year from the Arena Football League, offensive, defensive, and Ironman, plus highlights from the National Conference Championship game between Columbus and Georgia. Another big upset for the Destroyers there. Pray back to you. All right, Stan, thanks. We've got revenge working in the way of the San Jose Sabercats right now as they are leading the Arena Bowl champion Chicago Rush 28-7, kicking off with one minute to play in the first half. Rookie A.J. Hagman sends it deep. Jonathan Nordberg back to take it. And a perfect kick. Perfect kick goes over the crossbar, and that means it's a touchback, and Chicago uh, will set up for them. There you see Matt Durazio on the bench, so Coach Hohensee, Mark, has made the move. The stats would seem to indicate it was a good one. Durazio obviously hampered by back pain. 6 of 18, 64 yards, one touchdown, and three interceptions. And welcome to the biggest game of your life, Russ Mikna. Who was Russ Mikna, you ask? Well, he's a product of Western Illinois, played there for three years, one of the Leathernecks in Macomb, Illinois. Spent some time with the Rams in some of their training camps, and everybody we talked to 
Bark with the Chicago rush said they have a lot of confidence in this kid. Yeah, they love the way he delivers the football. Obviously a lefty, so that changes things a little bit, but tons of confidence in Mikna. Really believe that he's a guy that has great leadership skills. And talking to Matt DeRazio yesterday said, we don't want to call him a backup because he's nobody's backup. This kid can lead a football team. Well, he's not a backup right now. And a smart call by the coaching staff of the Chicago Rush. Get something early for him and get him in a rhythm. Rob Baker with the catch and picks up a first down there. Again, Western Illinois University, practice squad with the Rams. Uh, the gr late, great NFL Europe. He was with the Amsterdam Admirals, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers of the CFL, and now with the Chicago Rush. His first completion, a first down. He's now 7-7 seven of seven in the playoffs. He was 6-6 six of six last week. And he's got 8 2 Molden wide open. Molden with a great move this time covers up when he gets the hit. And just like that, Mitna has them down to the 11 yard line. And the timeout is called. Tell you what, if you're Mike Cohen seeing the head coaching staff of the Chicago Rush, what you've seen from the first two throws from Russ Mitna, exactly what you wanted to see, Mark. Yeah, Mick has been absolutely wonderful right now, coming in here, throwing the passes, getting together with his football team, and you know what? That's the kind of thing you need coming off the bench, and Mikna has taken a lot of reps over the last few weeks since DeRazio's back. He's been flared up, so he's gotten a little experience. He's been with his first team in practice, so it's not a, a situation where, oh, my God, the court backup quarterback's coming in. This guy is familiar with the guys out there right now that he's playing with, Trey. How does this change everybody else in the offensive huddle, their mindset now with Mikna in the game? Well, I think you feel a little relief you know your your quarterback the guy who's led your team is out of the game right now he's beaten up he's a warrior you want to go out there and you want to go and play well for him because you know what he's given up to line up there you know the kind of pain he was in you just want to go in there and, and make a play for him all right make the two for two so far on this drive First and ten, little shovel pass to Bob McMillan. Bob McMillan directing traffic. Gets it inside the five-yard line. The Sabercats are saying there's a fumble, but the only opinion that matters is the one in the striped shirts, and clearly you see them saying he was down by contact. So there's another timeout on the field now. San Jose making that timeout with just under 30 seconds to play. Let's see if we can get a good look at it. Uh, hard to tell. It, it appeared as if the ball was coming out as McMillan was going down. Again, no replay in arena football, so there's no way to appeal that decision. Hard to tell on that angle right there. Yeah, he's going down. by Bobby Scipio, who was doing a good thing, blobbing, blocking, rather, Omar Smith on the run. Boy, a, lot of, a lot of small field, very condensed, a lot of bodies in there. Sometimes you just don't have the camera angles to see where that ball, if it did come out before you hit the ground. So uh, for McMillan, great for him because it uh, ends up that the referees say it was down by contact and Chicago retains possession of the ball. Boy, what would it mean for this team, Chicago, specifically the offense, to have McNick come in off the bench and on his first drive just before the half, be able to punch it, not, not kick a field goal, be able to punch it into the end zone. From a confidence standpoint, from a momentum standpoint, it would mean everything to this Chicago team because defensively, even though they've given up those 28 points, they've been put behind the eight ball short field and they have played very well, uh, intercepting the ball and getting some stops. All right, so Chicago takes the timeout. That is their last timeout. Interesting that they would use that in this situation. Time to take a look at the Coors Light cold hard stats in this game. And you take a look at the all-time winning coaches in terms of postseason in AFL. You have Tim Markham and Danny White, one and two. Three and four, the two opposing coaches on this field. Mike Cohen C for San Jose, or excuse me, for Chicago, and Darren Arbit for San Jose. Yeah, both of these teams have been absolutely tremendous. You look at how many times they've been to the, the, the playoffs. They've done a great job. And since 2000, nobody better than the Cats in the league as far as the regular season is Well, how good was the coaching staff of the Albany Firebirds in 1994? You have Doug Kay, now the head coach of the Columbus Detroiters, in Arena Bowl. 
Bowl 21. Mike Hohensee of Chicago. Mike Daly, the head coach of the Colorado Crush. And there you have Darren Arbet, now head coach of the San Jose Sabercats. Let's just say the talent pool was deep on that staff. Yeah, that's the coaching tree that you wanted to fall off of right there if you were to leave on that coaching tree. Chicago scoreless for their last 21 plus minutes. Can they punch it in with 27 seconds to play? McNabalen going deep. Bobby Scipio, touchdown. And suddenly, HP Pavilion has gone silent. Wow. And Trey, that's a play right there. No disrespect to Matt DeRazio, but with that back, he would not have been able to make. He'd have taken another hit, and they would not have scored there. Mikna is able to keep backpedaling, fall away from pressure, hit Scipio going across the end line, the back line. Very, very astute and smart play by Mikna and buying time for his receivers to get open. Great call by the coaching staff. By the way, the ball that came back down onto the field was the one that Scipio had thrown into the upper deck, uh, pulling a little Wrigley Field match. Well, yeah, you get to keep the ball if it goes into the stands, but apparently if it goes into the stands on the hand of Bobby Scipio, it's coming back into the field because we don't want it. Going back to the rivalry that we were talking about to start the game. Extra point. Kick is up, and Dan France knocks it through. So a critical touchdown just before the half with 22 seconds to play. And how good was Russ Mickna on that drive coming into the injured Matt Durazio? Three of three, 37 yards, and a touchdown. Back to that play, Mark. You're seeing things that, as you said, Durazio simply can't do right. Yeah, right here is a great pressure. You know, he's he continues backpedal, 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 and then throw it to the corner on time, off the back foot, and it perfectly lays it up there. Great anticipation and buying time so that he can get that ball into the end zone. And of course the ball went into the stands and uh, the Sabercat fans said return to sender. We don't need no Bobby Scipio throwing our uh, throwing the footballs up into us. Now it's a great move and a great score for the Chicago Rush but San Jose still clearly in the driver's seat with 22 seconds to play. They're up by two scores and they're going to get the ball to start the second half. Yeah but with 22 seconds in this league that can be an eternity. Um, so you know what you, you kick it away right here and you trust that your number one ranked defense in all of the AFL the Chicago Rush is going to be able to get a stop here and at least either get you an opportunity with the football or at least limit damage and not give up another score. So that's what they're counting on right here this Chicago Rush football team. Well, if they're going to do something, it's going to have to be a turnover because they are out of timeouts here in this first half. France kicks it deep. Rodney Wright is there. Plays it off the net. Comes out past the five. Look out! And give Todd France, oh, Dan France rather, a lot of credit. He saved a touchdown that would have been devastating to Chicago's chances. Great tackle. You got to love the nice sling tackle by a kicker. Boy, that looked like something right out of the rodeo right there. Grab the back of the shoulder pads right there, sling them around a little bit. It's like calf roping, right? You just need the rope, tie up the ankles, and uh, and hit it to the official. What was your time? Now, that's, a, uh, th that's a horse collar Roy Williams tackle that has since been banished in the NFL, but Dan France stopping that return at only 32 yards. You see the turnovers, the big thing right there. San Jose getting four of them and 14 points. Green rolls one direction, throws it back the other way, trying to go across the middle to Rodney Wright. And Rodney Wright finally run out of bounds by Jonathan Ordway inside the 10-yard line with 8.7 seconds to play. Boy, that play took a long time to develop, but it certainly worked out well for San Jose in the end. A little smoke screen right off the edge right there. And you know what it was so impressive with the San Jose team? Nobody gave up, and the blocks out there. People throwing blocks, and people getting knocked around. Uh, I, that, that is an aggressive play, and that's everybody on that football team fighting to get their receiver some extra yards. When Chicago has lived on their defense all season long, they need him to come up big here. As Grieve with time, going to the corner in that one. Smart play by the veteran quarterback. Throw it away click quickly to give yourself another chance to have a shot at the end zone with 3.7 seconds left. Chicago rushed the fewest points in the first half all season, 14 points. Their previous worst, 19 at Kansas City on March 4th. So they're going for the field goal right now on the last play. It'll be a 26-yard field goal by the rookie, A.J. Hagler. Again, Craig Wheelahan, the longtime NFL backup. The holder. 
kick is up. And it's off the nets. It's no good. And that's a live ball, folks, as you know, will take it. And he is plastered. And that will be the end of the first half. So a another one avoided by Chicago. They don't give up a touchdown. The field goal is no good, but still at the break, it is San Jose on top, 28 to 14. Sports Center halftime presented by Mitsubishi coming up after these messages. And with that, we welcome you into the Sports Center halftime report presented by Mitsubishi Motors. I'm Stan Barrett. The Saber Cats in the rush trying to get to the Arena Bowl. The Columbus Destroyers have already made it to New Orleans, courtesy of yet another stop on their unlikely title run today in Atlanta. Taking on the Georgia Force. Chris Grison fakes the handoff. He's crushed by Ken Jones. Columbus up by seven. Next play, though. Grison with a bad pass. Picked off by Gerald Brown. And look at Brown maneuver in the end zone. Looks like the Force players weren't sure he was going to bring it out. And Brown made moves all the way down the field, 54 yards for the touchdown. His second interception of the day, Columbus up 21-7. Fourth quarter, Georgia down 14. Grison to Chris Jackson. Extra point good. Columbus still up six, though, 48-42. But then later, Grison to Derek Lee. And Georgia up by one now, 49-48. Fourth quarter, same score. Watch this play. Josh Harris to B.J. Beret. And Beret looks like he's going to run, but then finds David Saunders open in the back of the end zone. Shot puts it to him, and Columbus up 54-49. Then Matt Nagy finishing it off the long pass to Damian Gross. Columbus wins it 66-56, and they are going to the Arena Bowl. Two and six on the road during the regular season, but they win three straight on the road in the playoffs to get to the Arena Bowl. Seven and nine on the regular season, but they're going to play for the championship. And you look at the Chicago Rush last season, the Cinderella run of the Destroyers this season, and they're very similar. Both won three games on the road in the playoffs after going seven and nine in the regular season. Of course, the Rush went on to win the Arena Bowl last year. The Destroyers hoping to do the same in two weeks in New Orleans. Basket's up 14 on the rush right now. Rough first half for Matt DeRazio. Went into the game with a sore back. And this hit certainly didn't help. DeRazio out it'll be up to Russ Mickner now to rally the rush in the second half. Meanwhile, we're wired for some of the sounds of the first half. Champs, baby. Put it in the back. I got you. See, he almost got it, but that was a good one, but a little earlier. I, I, if he's sitting there, I know, but he sit down, you can still get it. It's just you versus him. Hey, a lot of game, baby, a lot of game. Right. The AFL honored its outstanding players this week with the Player of the Year awards. Offensive Player of the Year, Utah Blazers receiver Syed Burley. 166 catches, 2,129 yards, both AFL records. He's the first player ever to record more than 2,000 receiving yards in a regular season. Also scored 49 touchdowns. The Orlando Predators, Greg White is the AFL's Defensive Player of the Year. He set single season records for sacks with 15 and tackles for loss with 17. He was also the league's Lineman of the Year, becoming only the second player to win Lineman and Defensive Player of the Year awards in the same season. Silas Demery did it two years ago for Los Angeles. And Desperado's do-it-all player Will Pettis is the league's Iron Man of the Year. Talk about doing it all. He led the Desperados in receiving with 130 catches, also had 59 and a half tackles and three interceptions on defense. And he also returned 58 kickoffs, taking four of them back for touchdowns as Dallas went 15 and one during the AFL regular season. This Sports Center ESPN's presentation of Russell Athletic Arena Football, the conference championships. We are in cat country, ladies and gentlemen, in San Jose. It is 28 to 14. The Saber Cats on top of the Chicago Rush. Let's take a look behind the scenes with Discover All Access. If you can't bow for that, I've seen this defense two weeks in a row. Shut people out. You're capable of great things. We're going to get some turnovers. We've already stopped them. We're not going to turn the ball over anymore. Man, I believe in you. Believe in yourself and go take this thing. Win on three. One, two, three. Win. Win. Let's go now. Let's go now, baby. Let's finish this thing. That the Chicago Rush locker room at half. Trey Wingo here with Mark Slareth. Mark, San Jose has done a great job. They've 
held on to the football. They've been consistent offensively. They've got some turnovers. Uh, but the bigger issue now is Chicago is down by two scores and San Jose gets the ball to start the second half. How important is it for Chicago's defense to rise up early in this second half? Mark? Well, they have to rise up early because it's all on their shoulders. They're the number one defense in the Arena Football League. And when you look at this team already in the first half, they've had two defensive stops and an interception. So they've stopped three of seven drives for San Jose. So it's on them right now. They've got to come up with a stop because San Jose gets the ball first. And, of course, the story also for Chicago is Matt Grazio, their starting quarterback, is out. Backup Ruck, Mick, Russ Mickna came in and did a great job at his one drive, and he joins us now on the broadcast. Russ, what was it like jumping in midstream? <laughs> Well, I've been a little lucky in the last couple of weeks, you know, with Matt being dinged up, I've gotten a few more reps than most backups in this league get, and, uh, you know, kind of been ready to play, so we'll see what happens here. What advice has Matt given you for the rest of this game? Oh, uh, man, he's given me advice all year, you know, and uh, I've been lucky to be, you know, being able to watch him and watch, uh, learn from Coach Hull that just take care of the ball and see what happens, you know? For your confidence alone, how great was it to come out on that first drive, go three for three, and put points on the board? It feels good, you know, it feels better for this team, you know, we, our defense has uh, carried us all year and I fully expect them to do that again in the second half and my job is just to try and put the ball in the end zone as many times as I can. And I imagine Bobby Scipio is telling you to throw him the ball on every play. <laughs> I don't think there's a play that Bobby doesn't like it, that's for sure. All right, Russ, best of luck in the second half. All right, thank you. No surprise there as Chicago gets set to kick off. France kicks it deep. It is off the net. Rodney Wright will take it. Comes out across the five, has a gap to the 20 and for the second time France roughing him up, running him out of bounds. He's suddenly my favorite kicker in the Arena League. Why wouldn't he be? You know, I, I mean, you know me. I, I have an aversion to kickers. I mean, sadly, I don't like, sadly, I do know you, Mark. I just don't like to call them football players. But I got to tell you, that's a football play by France right there. He's not shying away from contact. He's not afraid to go up over that wall. Look at him right there, making sure he's making a play for his team. In the San Jose Love bench, it. no less. You might call him a football player, Jesse. Uh, let's not go not, that not far. Not that far? No, I don't want to go that far yet. All right, here we go. All on the Chicago D. First and 10. A little swing pass to Rodney Wright from Mark Grieb, and they're able to collar him after about a five-yard gain. John Moyer, the AFL the player, Defensive Player of the Week last week with three tackles and a couple of sacks, there to rack, rack him up. Mark, we, we heard this from Russ Mickman. We were talking to him just before the half got underway. This is a team, for all what Bobby Scipio does and Matt D'Orazio has done in the regular season, the defense has carried it. They've got to step up here. Yes, this defense has been great, and as I've mentioned many times in this broadcast, arguably the best defense in the history of arena football. Second down, and... Grieb is able to find the zone between Dennison Robinson and Duan Alfonso. James Rowe is there. Let me give you a little bit about what I'm talking about when I say the best defense in the history of the AFL. 44.9 points per game. First all-time record was 45.4. So the first all-time, they're first in the league. 91.4 uh, passing yards per game first. Their second total in total defense at 273.4. So this is a defense that has been first or second in just about every significant category. However, Mark Grieve doesn't care about any of that, Mark Slayer, because he hits Ben Nelson for the touchdown, and just like that, it is once again a three-possession game. Nelson on the crossing pattern in the end zone. Touchdown, San Jose. If there is one fly in the defensive ointment for Chicago, it's sacks. And Grieb had pressure, and he was able to avoid it on that play. You've got to be able to pressure the quarterback in this league, especially when you get down to the red zone, because if you give receivers time, they're going to find cracks, and they're going to get themselves open. Well, that's the second straight kick that Haglund has missed. He missed the field goal at the end of the first half, and he misses the extra point to start the second half. Here's the touchdown, though. As Ordway was beaten on the crossing pattern by Nelson. And again, that's a product of a quarterback having too much time, Mark. Too much time, but Grieb, great. I mean, look at the reactions there. He's so excited, but Grieb does a great job shuffling around, moving within the pocket, five-step drop, then manipulating the pocket, moving up toward the line of scrimmage, finding the crossing route. Nelson, great strike right there by Grieb, and that's all Grieb right there, buying himself some time, letting that route come open. All right, it's important now for Chicago not to lose the mental battle. 
because their starting quarterback is out. They're down 34 to 17, or 34 to 14, excuse me. They, they really have to tell themselves, we are still in this game. Yeah, and this is a team, you know, you're going to give up a touchdown occasionally. You're going to give up some big plays. They know they can get stops. They know they can create turnovers. I guarantee you this defense is still very confident, even though they didn't get the stop they wanted right there. Haglund sends it deep, and it is a perfect kick off the crossbar, which means it's a dead ball, and Jonathan Ordway can only watch. Why is Matt Durazio on the bench? Well, he came into this game with a very suspect back, and early on, a big hit, an illegal hit there by Alan Harper, and then a couple of very legal hits. You can absolutely see him grimacing at that. And when you saw him walk off the field after every possession, you, you just knew he didn't have the mobility in that back. I hurt for him. I mean, you know how bad that back hurts, and then you start taking hits like that, 300-pound guys laying on top of you. That's never a good situation. And Durazio now sitting on the bench. See if Mikna can keep up the magic he had in his last drive to end the first half of Chicago. First and ten from the five. The lefty with plenty of time. Throws a strike, and Molden, well, they're saying he did not catch it. It touched the ground. So let's bring in now the San Jose quarterback, Mark Green. Mark, how important was it for you guys after the missed field goal at the end of the first half to go up and put a touchdown on the board? Well, I think always the first drive of the second half sort of sets a tone. And, uh, you know, I think it, it was a important drive. And, uh, ben, you know, Ben Nelson just made a fantastic read on the coverage and adjusted it. And it was a nice touchdown. As a quarterback, you've got to love what you're seeing from your defense in this game. You know, after last week, you know, people said a lot of things about them, and uh, they've really responded to the, to the challenge, I think. What do you think of the job that Mick is doing coming in for Matt Durazio? I think he's doing a nice job. You know, obviously, uh, you know, that's, that's a tough job to fill, but uh, I think he's doing a nice job. Mark, we appreciate the time. We'll talk to you later on. Thank you. Uh, one good thing that Mickey can do is find Bobby Scipio because Scipio can make something out of nothing in a hurry, Mark Suarez. If I'm a backup quarterback, if you ask me to put the pads on right now and go down there and play, I'm finding number three and I'm trying to throw him the ball just about every time. Six foot three, 220 pounds. He's got great speed, great hands. He had a couple of drops early in this sure game, three but of them. he's going to be a guy. He's a leader on this football team. He's vocal. He goes about his business kind of boisterous, but he's a guy that wants the football, believes in himself, and believes he can lead this team back to a victory. Bobby Scipio is that guy. 39 yards, most of it after the catch. First and goal for Chicago. Scipio in motion, throwing the little corner route. And that clearly a mix-up between an inexperienced quarterback and the wide receiver. It looked like Mickner was stopping uh, at the goal line and Mickner threw the fade. And on the fade, there was no receiver there, so the Aarons lucky fan of the game was able to make the grab and hang on to the ball. Remember, any ball that goes in during the course of play, you get to keep it. Unless, of course, it's thrown up there by Bobby Scipio. We've already seen San Jose fans throw that one back. Second and goal now. Trips right. Bolden comes back in motion. Mickna looking right. Throws it in the corner. Scipio, does he make the catch? They're saying he makes the catch. Scipio thinks it's a touchdown. There is a flag on the play. What a great Good job by Scipio to hold on to that football. And a great job by Mikna, understanding he had a free pay play. It looked like offsides by the defense, so he had a three, uh, free play. He's just going to throw it out there, see if Scipio could make a play, and he did. Yeah, that's going to be offsides against Allen Harper, number 98. Now watch Scipio here. Off the wall, remember which is the, legal. The wall is legal. It's now inbound. Is, was, that, was that across the goal line? It looked like that might have been across the goal line. Let's see if Perry Hanover's mic is uh, straightened out here, if we can get the official call. All the masking, baby. All On the defense, penalties have to just to the goal. No second down. So they take the yardage instead of the play. And it's nice to hear Perry Hanover after a silent first half. Well, let's come to the, the catch again as, as Bobby Scipio comes back to the football, off the wall. Looks Boy, to, uh, that looks to me like the ball had crossed over. That looks when like he a gets touchdown. controlled. Oh, there it looks well, like it's that's over. where he has control, so it was not over. He did not have control until right about there, and then it clearly was not over the end line. Yeah, good call by the officials. So they'll take the yardage, second and goal. Shovel pass.
touchdown. Joe Peters rumbles his way into the end zone. And Migna stepping up and doing a great job for the injured Matt Durazio. Two drives, two scores, Mark. This Chicago team, there is no give in this Chicago team. They will fight to the end of this thing. They have got the heart of champions, and they want to prove that last year was no fluke. If they can come back from this one, they'll prove that to everybody, the whole nation here. And you love it when an offensive lineman gets a chance to score. Anytime an offensive line. They've got the best hands on the team, the smartest guys on the team. Throw them a ball out there. Let the guy have a little bit of glory. All right, you need to stop talking now. All right. Peters, a three-yard touchdown reception. It is 34-21, San Jose on top. Mikna has done his job. It's now time for Chicago's defense to do theirs. Back in San Jose, Chicago has responded to the opening score by the Sabercats in the second half, 34-21. Jeremy Inertle already has an interception in this game. He's going to need another one, Mark, because they can trade touchdowns all you want. San Jose would take that and say, thank you very much. We'll see Columbus in New Orleans. Exactly. You can watch us from your TV sets at home in Chicago in New Orleans if we trade scores from here on out. So, as we mentioned, in the opening kickoff of the second half, Chicago Rush have got to come up with a stop. But I'm going to tell you something right now. This San Jose, San Jose team has felt disrespected all year. No and, question. And here we are talking about what Chicago needs to do. San Jose needs to come out here and continue to put the pressure on offensively execute. And the return game has been big for the Sabercats. Rodney Wright takes the kick and one more time gets loose and Jonathan Nordway just plows him into the boards. Again, winner of this conference championship moves on to New Orleans to play in Arena Bowl 21. Columbus is there. Shocking second seed in Georgia. 66 to 56. They await the winner of this contest. Arena Bowl 21, Sunday, July 29th. 3 o'clock Eastern on ESPN on ABC. Well, I tell you what, you, you're absolutely right. San Jose does feel disrespected because this is a franchise since 2000, has more wins than anybody else. They've won a couple of Arena Bowls, but they're stuck out here on the West Coast and they feel slighted by everybody. And Mark Green feeling slighted by his offensive line on that one. Great pressure right up the middle as they're able to make the sack. E.J. Burt, who has four forced fumbles on the year, almost forced another one right there, Mark. Three-step drop right there, and anytime you get a three-step drop, you're not beating guys around the edge. You've got to plow through guys, and Burt takes an inside track right there, head down, just ultimately bull rushes his way right back to the quarterback. Excellent effort by Burt. Loss of five on the play. Sets up a second and 15. Reed this time has time, but it's a minimal gain to James Rowe, a pickup of six on the play. So it'll set up a third and a very long nine. And again, in arena football, there's no punting. On fourth down, if you haven't converted the first on third down, you either go for it or you kick it. So there's really two downs here for San Jose to play with. Just about eight minutes to play in the third quarter. Reed has Rowe in motion, going deep for him, and Rowe is able to make the catch. That was a great throw by Green, Mark, because Robinson really had good coverage. He had great coverage, and he read that, timed it. And Mike Owens, the head coach of the Chicago Rush, told us he this is the smartest defense. They've got more smart players on defense than they do on offense. He said they study film like none other. They'll bait quarterbacks into making throws, and what you saw right there is Dennison Robinson basically baiting that throw, trying to come up with a pick, and it was a perfect throw by Greed because that was very, very close to being a disaster for San Jose. First and 10 from the 17. A little pressure, but Rodney Wright is wide open, and Rodney Wright loses the football, and who's got it? It might be a touchback back the other way, and it is a touchback the other way. Exactly what Chicago needs. The ball goes out, and Chicago will take over. No surprise, Dewan Alfonso, the man, making the stop. He is the guy that's all over this football field, and for a jack position player, a guy that has to, he's confined to one spot in the football field. He is a guy. He's confined to a spot, and as soon as the ball is in play, Alfonso just goes and makes plays. He's a headhunter back there, and look at him coming out from the act. Look at that tomahawk chop, knocks the ball out. Dewan Alfonso never gives up on a play. Absolutely, the hammer throws down an LT favorite. Coach Hoensey in the rush, back in it. 
Excuse me, Poppy? Hey, what's up? I know you're busy. Love to meet my family. Sure. Big Sox fans. My dad, Ed. Hi, Ed. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Mom, Mary. Hi, Mary. It's a pleasure. And that's my little sis, Christine. Christine. Hi. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you guys. Thanks. Thanks, Poppy. Right. Nice to meet you. Let's go look at the uh, studio. Over 3,000 years ago, Queen Nefertiti disappeared. Now a National Geographic Channel expedition goes to Egypt, armed with the latest digital scanning technology, on a high-tech mission to identify a body that may be Nefertiti. But we found something we never expected. Could these mummies be the parents of King Tut? Nefertiti and the Lost Dynasty premieres Monday at 9 on Channel 276, the National Geographic Channel. Own a timeshare or campground membership? Turn it into cash. Timeshares only got us our full asking price before our next monthly payment was due. Timeshares only is the nation's largest, number one most successful timeshare agency, representing properties from the biggest names in the industry. No one sells more timeshares. Call now and receive a free information kit, including 10 secrets to timeshares. You owe it to yourself to work with the best. Don't delay. Call 800-690-9294. Back in San Jose, Mark Reed can only look up and wonder what would have happened if Rodney Wright had held on to that football to go up 40 or 41 to 21. Instead, it is Chicago ball with a chance to cut it to a one-possession game, Mark Schlereth. And you think this is a little unusual for both teams? Chicago had the fewest turnovers all year at 17. San Jose tied for second at 21. Today, Chicago has four and San Jose has three. Just tells you it points to the magnitude of this game, the pressure these uh, players are feeling. Mickness, straight drop, looking for Bobby Scipio, and Scipio is able to make the catch. And you were just telling me something in the break that you got a gut feeling about what may be happening here. Well, right now, you know, when you're under the under the gun and you're in pressure, you got to go to your big time player. Talking to Scipio yesterday, he said, "Hey, I'm one of the biggest time players in this league. When the pressure's on, I want the football. I'll make plays. I have a feeling that he's about ready to start taking this game over offensively for the Chicago Rush because he is big and physical, and he wants." He wants to be the guy out there. Second down and a short two. Scipio in motion, trying to get free. Instead, uses the jam to his advantage to pick up the first down. And what about Mikna right there? You see that little sidearm sling Perfect. right there? Throwing it around the rush, throwing it around the hands, making his own little window. He just comes out there, flips it out to Scipio, and two straight passes in a row to Scipio for the first down. He's taking over this football game. And what can you say about Russ Mikna since coming on and replacing Matt DeRazio? 7 of 9, 92 yards, two touchdowns. No interceptions. He has absolutely fit in and fit in well. Rob Mager goes in motion. First and ten to the 18-yard line. Victor with all kinds of time, but that one's underthrown. And Omar Smith could not quite handle it. That's the first real mistake we've seen Mickna make. Underthrow right there off the back foot. Tried to feather it in there. And what you see right here, a little bit of pressure gets on him. That's the first poor throw and poor decision he's made since he's been playing quarterback since uh, the second quarter right there. So He rushed that one. Yeah, he got a, he got a little push, a little pressure on him. Tried to throw across his body a little bit there. Didn't step into the throw. So he got away with one right there. Got to feel fortunate. Take a look at the possessions and the situations. Durazio only had one touchdown on seven possessions. Mickniff two for two on second down. Again, facing pressure. Perhaps a little late with the throw there as Omar Smith almost got his hands on that one as well. Mickniff out there trying to work the officials. Say, hey, that guy's all over my guy. He's getting there early. And sometimes you can just put that into officials' head. You just keep harping on him as a quarterback. He's on my guy early, on my guy early, trying to coax a flag out of the officials. All right, here's a big play because they've got two incompletes on the first two downs. Even though you have to go for it a kick for it on fourth down, if you can pick up half the yardage, it makes that fourth down so much more manageable. They've got to get something here. Scipio in motion. Looking for Bobby. And Bobby is right at the sticks and a great job. Cleavon Thomas is there to clean him up. But I tell you, that was a pressure throw by Mickman. 
pressure throw by Mixon. Look at Scipio. He's going to sell the post. Here he goes, sell the post, and just sit down right there. Just about the time Thomas got to run, respect the post coming at him. He sits, squats on that route right, knows exactly where that first down marker is, picks up that first down on a little stop route off the post action. Well, clearly Bobby Scipio is the man when it comes to receptions. Almost doubled the entire team total. You wonder after setting him up with that move if they don't go deep here. Now they go to Scipio on the screen. It looked like Mager was wide open in the end zone, but they didn't look his way. And I think Mager may be saying that when he walks back to the huddle. Still a great job by Scipio to pick up seven or eight yards on that play. And let's talk about Mikna for a minute because Mikna understands this offense. One of the rules of the offense, an uncovered man. If your DB is given a 12-yard cushion, that means it's an uncovered man. Flip it out there, especially when that receiver is Bobby Scipio. You saw nobody pressed up against Bobby Scipio. Throw it out there and let him run with the ball after the catch. And Mitna understanding the offense, he's not missing a beat. He just flips it out there, easy completion for nine yards. Second and one for Chicago. Looks like they might have jumped, and they call the whistle. Well, I tell you what, a couple of times there's been an offsides, but Allen Harper has been an absolute beast on that defensive line this afternoon for San Jose. He's, well, you know, with Ron Jones being set for disciplinary actions as we listen and to the Crunch, call. Number 97 on the defense. Five-yard penalty, first down. That's George Williams, not Allen Harper. Right. As, uh, as Ron Jones has been sat down for disciplinary action, he's their leading sack guy with seven sacks, and he has not been able to play today. Kendrick Office has come in to play for him, but Allen Harper really picking up the pressure. Three sacks on the season. He has really been a very efficient pass rusher today, really putting pressure on the opponent's quarterback. And that play runs no time off the clock, and it gives them a first down now on the six-yard line. So for most of this game, midway through the second quarter, San Jose has been comfortably in control, and now it could be a one-possession game with one more score. And yes. there's the flag. What's interesting about that, you saw the up judge. It looked like he was going to throw the flag. And then he looked back, and the back judge did throw the flag on Cleveland Thomas there. Right, and, and as I mentioned earlier, Pass Mick the, Number eight on the defense. Has a just to the goal. Automatic first down. And what do we talk about with Mikna? Earlier in this possession, earlier in this drive, hey, breath, they're all over my guys. They're grabbing my guys. They're not giving my guys a chance. We need the flag, and there he goes. He coaxes one out. Now, that was a pretty obvious call, but he drew attention to it right. earlier in the drive. Smart quarterbacking by Russ Mikna. Scipio under center. And Dewan Alfonso in the end zone. Sometimes you mix it up and confusion works to your advantage. Well, Bobby Scipio was an option quarterback in high school, and you saw him run the option perfectly right there. Tosses the ball out there to Alfonso. Great Come play. On, let's go, man. Let's go, let's go, know, let's go. We always talk about chemistry. Those are things, and those plays were developed as this team was goofing around sure. before practice. Bobby Scipio getting under the center. Mike Cohen, see the coach, sees it and says, hey, I like that stuff. Let's put some of that into our offense. Dan France calling for the snap. And with the extra point, remember, A.J. Haglin missed a field goal and an extra point. So right now, one more touchdown, and Chicago would have the lead. We've got us a ball game with 118 to play in the third. When hot, molten rock, ash, and gases erupt, and escape from deep below the surface, it often results in a touchdown. For those who have what it takes on the inside, Russell has what it takes on the outside. Official athletic retailer of the Arena Football League, Champ Sports, where sport lives. 
Introducing Accelerate with Protein. Proven to increase endurance up to 29% over your old sports drink. So while others fade, you can stay strong. Don't fade. Accelerate. On 10 game road trips, sportscasters like me and the skipper depend on Motel 6 for a great rate and plenty of post game shout out. So we don't miss one second of the action. Try the decaf, skipper. We'll leave the light on for you. I need that back, Bob. Back in San Jose, and my goodness, Mark Schlereth, have things changed. It is now a one-possession game, thanks to the Bobby Scipio option to Dewan Alfonso. The Sabercats lead at one point was 20 points. It is now cut to a six-point margin as San Jose gets set to get the ball back. San Jose, they're a football team. You know they understand offense. You know they can get going, and they've had great returns right here. They're going to have to step up on offense and make something happen. Well, I tell you what, Rodney Wright played that one pretty casually off the crossbar. That ball could have bounced anywhere, and anybody could have gotten it. D.J. Blyseth there to clean it up. Right now, to this point, the ADT defensive play of the game, Dewan Alfonso stripping Rodney Wright as he was going in for a score. Touchback out of the end zone gave Chicago the stop they needed and they converted with the touchdown option toss Scipio to Dewan Alfonso and now the pressure's really on San Jose Mark. Yes and San Jose has not done anything this second half about possessions coming out they scored early but they've turned the ball over Alfonso making that turnover this is where if you want to be a champion you've got to come up and make plays and not those kind of plays. Well Mark Gre Grieve throws that one a little low and James Rowe can't pull it in but let let's not underestimate what Mark Grieve and San Jose can do. This is a guy who has been to the mountaintop. This is a guy who has won the Arena Bowl, been the MVP of an Arena Bowl. He threw for 100 touchdowns this year, fourth best in the league. He knows how to get it done. Oh, there's no question. Mark Grieve can lead his football team, and he has done it since 2000, 90 and 32 in the regular season. Uh, they're by far the best AFL football team in the regular season as far as wins are concerned. Over 100 points better than the next team with that 90 and 32 record. And a big first down there as Rodney Wright gathers it in. The question now, will they try and get off one more play before the end of the fourth quarter? The answer to that question definitively is no. So ladies and gentlemen, buckle up. It's going to get bumpy. One quarter to play for the right to meet Columbus in the Arena Bowl 21. Coach Owens, he's got his team ready. Is Coach Arvin ready to withstand the challenge? It's In San Jose, one quarter to play. All that's at stake, a chance to play in New Orleans July 21st in Arena Bowl, July 29th in Arena Bowl 21. San Jose with a six-point lead in the ball, a lead that has been 21 points in the first half and 20 points at one point in the second half. Mark Grieve dropping back, looking deep for Rodney Wright, and Rodney Wright has got it, but wait a minute, there's a flag on the play. And it looks like it's going to go against Chicago. That's the way to start the fourth quarter if you're San Jose, Mark Schleier. Yes, it is. Let's look in on the call here. Illegal defense. Outside rush by number 55. Penalty decline. Touchdown. That would be Curtis Eason with the illegal rush. Obviously, that penalty is declined. And boy, talk about exactly what you needed from the Sabercats. Yes, indeed. And look at Grieve moving, manipulating the pocket, getting outside, throwing it to the corner right there. Picture perfect on the trajectory. Falls it in there, throws it in, and uh, Rodney Wright right there running under the football. A perfect throw from Mark Grieve. The kick is up, and this one he nails. So just like that, the Sabercats have regained control of this game, 41 to 28. Mark Grieve, those biochemistry classes in UC Davis clearly paying off. That mastery degree in education from Stanford clearly paying off. Rodney Wright, who has had some great moments in this game and had some rough ones, but he had the one that matters right now as they open up the fourth quarter with a 33-yard touchdown. Take a look at the replay here one more time. Replay, and as you see it right here, 
buying himself some time, getting outside the pocket, and unbelievable throw right there by Greaves. He couldn't have placed it any better by Mark Greaves. No, he can't, he can't run it down there and hand it to his receiver <laughs> any better than that. It was a great throw, and uh, you're always, you know, at some point, and I've talked to you, Nerdle, about this, at some point you're going to get beat, right. and you just got to continue to come back, have a short memory, and, and fight. And Jeremy Nerdle has gotten an interception in this game. He'll come back. He'll continue to play hard. He'll find a way to make another play before this game ends. Well, he's going to need to make one, maybe two, if Chicago's going to get back in this one. Once again, it's a two-possession game. The kick goes off the nets, through the nets. Ordway takes it out, gets one block from Majors, and Ordway goes over a submarine type tackle from A.J. Haglund. We're seeing some tackling kickers in this game, Mark Schlereth. How about this? These kickers are trying to make me eat my words. I always talk about them not being football players. These two guys came to play some football today. Absolutely. Well, look, they're going to have to fix the board because of that one. Car carrying members right there. That's the submarine going in there. Looking for quarters. Look at him right there. Load me up. Find me somebody to hit, coach. Find me somebody to hit. Look at France. He He's like, yeah. that. France has been tremendous in this game. I, I, I still got to give the edge to France in the tackling, but Haglund pretty solid right there. All right, the crowd is into it now. See if the Russian Mikta can respond on first down. Over the middle, Molden wide open. Sort of hesitates and gives up the first down. Still a solid pickup of eight plus yards as Jason Gathers is there. Do not forget, the winner of this game heads to New Orleans. The takeoff finale of the arena football season as the Columbus Destroyers, Destroyers will take on the winner of this game in Arena Bowl 21. Russell Athletic ESPN Arena 21 kicks off live from the Big Easy in New Orleans on ESPN. The kick, July 29th, 3 Easy. After the eight-yard pickup, second and two. Mikna avoids the rush and decides to take off and look, oh my goodness, a big, big game, but he paid the price as Kendrick Office came in and cleaned him up, Mark. And, and that's exactly what Russ Mikna gives this offense. DeRazio goes down, back injury, can't make the throws, is hurting, can't scramble around in the pocket, enter Russ Mikna, leads his football team, avoiding the rush, bouncing around in the pocket, he's doing whatever he can do to help this football team win. And that's a big hit on a backup quarterback, he just pops right up, he's okay. Pick up a 14 and a first down from the 15. Mikna one more time scrambling. Finds Molden. Molden does a great job to get away from Gathers and move it inside the 10-yard line as the clock continues to move. 12.30 to play. And again, the clock only stops in arena football on timeouts, on scores, or changes of possessions unless we're inside the one-minute mark. Yeah, and going back to that play, Mikna understanding where his receivers are. He was trying to go over the middle to Bobby Scipio, who was double-covered. Scrambles up in the pocket and just Kind of flicks it out to the outside because he knows his receivers are on a little stop route against the board there. Gives himself a second and five situation. Scipio goes in motion. This time he picks up the pressure. Decides to run it and it's picked off. Marquise Floyd, that may be a game-changing arena bowl getting play by Marquise Floyd. Marquise Floyd. San Jose erupting the HP Pavilion on fire as the Sabercats come up with a huge stop. When hot, molten rock, ash, and gases erupt and escape from deep below the surface, it often results in a touchdown. For those who have what it takes on the inside, Russell has what it takes on the outside. It is not just the strength to learn, but the strength to teach. Not just the strength to follow, but the strength to lead. It is not just the strength to wake up your life, but the strength to live out your dreams. There's strong, and then there's Army strong. To learn more about the Army's 150 different career opportunities, visit GoArmy.com strong.
Welcome to a televised performance of the National Symphony. We will be hearing Beethoven's Ninth, and the conductor will be replaced by the rapper 50 Cent, who after drinking vitamin water formula 50, decided to give this a try. Sounds like he's integrated his hit into club. Extraordinary. Vitamin water, try it. We got it going on. ESPN's telecast of Russell Athletic Arena Football is brought to you by Russell Athletic. For those who have what it takes on the inside, Russell has what it takes on the outside. And in part by the U.S. Army. There's strong, and then there's Army strong. Find out more at GoArmy.com slash strong. Back in San Jose, just under 12 minutes to play. This place rocking after Marquise Floyd makes a huge interception to stop a Chicago rush drive. But was it a legal interception? Take a look at this, Mark Claret. It appears that perhaps quarterback Russ Mikna was across the line of scrimmage when he threw this ball. Well, here goes Russ Mikna. The ball was snapped on the nine-yard line. So as he crosses over the 10, we've got to see not where his body is. This is the only foot that matters that was still behind the nine-yard line. So that is legal. He threw that before. Your body can be across as long as you don't step over and touch beyond that nine yard line as you watch him here that throw is legal right there i believe so mick the still bad decision to throw across your body into coverage obviously but johnny on the spot marquise floyd makes a big play for the saber cats again no replay in the arena league so doesn't matter as grieve and company will take over and he hits uh, Grieb hits Rodney Wright for the game, and we're joined now uh, in the telecast by the Sabercats head coach, Darren Arbit. Coach Arbit, uh, boy, talk about the timing of a great defensive stop. You certainly got one there. Yeah, defense has been playing great all, all day and uh, putting a lot of pressure on the quarterback, and we got to continue to do that. Coach, it's interesting. Both of these teams so good at not turning the ball over throughout the season, yet both teams uh, multiple turnovers in this game. Why do you think that is? You know, that was a nice catch by Ben Nelson, you know. It's the Golden Arena Bowl, you know. We're, both teams are playing hard. Mike Hortz, he's a great coach. He has a lot of great players. So do we, and uh, we continue to play. Coach, congratulations on that touchdown. We'll get back to you later. Okay, thanks. Ben Nelson delivering two plays after the turnover. Touchdown, San Jose. And again, one extra point away from regaining that 20-point lead, Mark. Yes, and a great throw right there by Grieve. I think he had about a centimeter on each side of the football. That's how tight that that window was and somehow it found Ben Nelson's hands in the back of the end zone. Let's see if Hagman can regain that 20 point advantage. It splits the uprights and just like that this is how fast arena football can change. Nelson three touchdown catches on the day. The Sabercats back up by 20. You say stop and I say go the best movies all day every day I've got stars from direct TV punk if you love movies on stars how about a great movie on stars my friend join the movie revolution call 1-800-531-5000 and order the star super pack today Ben Nelson having a huge day for San Jose. Six catches, three touchdowns as San Jose with 10 and a half minutes to play, up by 20 and kicking off the Chicago. The 
this one off the nets. Ordway gathers it in, takes it up the middle, and he's pounded by Phil Glover right outside the 10-yard line. Well, if you're a Chicago Rush fan, have hope. They have been there, done that before. Five times in the regular season, they were down by double digits and came back to win. And as you see, both in weeks three and in week eight, they were able to turn around 21-point deficits. But it's a completely different thing, Mark, to try and do that when you're down by 20 in the fourth quarter with a chance to go to the Arena Bowl on the line and your backup quarterback under center. And also you're playing the Sabercats who won nine games by 20-plus points this season. So this is a football team that's used to playing with the lead. Mikna, straight drop on first down, going deep for Scipio and just overthrows him. Cleveland Thomas was trailing the play, but Scipio was open, and Mikna missed him. Scipio right here, you look at Scipio getting wide open behind the, behind the play right here. A little double move on the out. Gets the defensive back, Thomas to jump up there, and that, those are the plays. If you want to make that double-digit comeback, if that's what you've got to have, those are the plays you can't afford to miss. The quick scores that don't eat up clock. Could, could he have laid out for that ball? You know, I think that ball was, I think it was too far thrown. I think it was a little too close to the sideline for Bobby Scipio to feel like he could get to there. All right, second and ten. They go back to Scipio, and Scipio picks up the first down as he's run out of the 23. But let's take another look at that play. There he is right there. You know, I think he lost it a little lost bit. Lost sight of the ball. I think yeah. he lost sight of the ball the last second there, Trey. Yeah, probably could have laid out. If he but knew I where the ball just, was. I think he just caught it in the lights there for a second. And, and, uh, and that's an unfortunate mistake for the Chicago Rush, but they're still battling. Picking up a first down on that last throw to Scipio. Well, Scipio's been great in the second half. Uh, all those catches and, of course, the option pass when he was under center, or the option uh, toss, rather, to Juan Alfonso, Alfonso for the touchdown. First and ten, plenty of time. Rob Megan, who really hasn't had his name called at all in this contest, gets it down inside the 15-yard line where it'll be a first down. But again, Marcus, the clock continues to run here. Chicago's got to score, and they've got to score quickly. Yes, and, and they can't afford to make this a long, drawn-out drive. And the guy that I keep watching here on the line of scrimmage, Alan Harper, we've talked to him about the pressures. We've talked about the pressures that he has brought. He is really creating havoc and really getting after uh, this offensive line. Robert Boss trying to block him one-on-one -on -one right now has his hands full. So that's something we've got to watch here. Eight minutes to play. Winner goes to the Arena Bowl. San Jose up by 20. Mickna, straight drop. Looking for Mager again. That one skips to him. No good. But again, even on an incompletion, unless we're under one minute to play either in the first half or the end of the game, the clock will continue to run. And as much as the defense of San Jose is the enemy, the real enemy right now is that running clock, Mark. Yeah, when you've got a 20-point deficit you're trying to erase, it's about putting the end, ball in the end zone and putting it in not tomorrow, but right now because you don't have time to waste. So it's about getting in and out of the huddle efficiently and moving. And right now they're, they're taking not. way too much time. They're sort of lollygagging up to the line here. Precious seconds are ticking away. I'm sure San Jose is thrilled that they're going underneath again. And they make the completion to about the six-yard line to A2 Molden. But again, a minute has run off the clock. Yeah, this is where you want to have a couple of plays called in the huddle as they're shuffling fleet players in and out, getting into their heavy package. But this is where you want to have plays called in the huddle and, and be able to just walk up the line of scrimmage and run two or three plays in a row. And that doesn't seem to be happening right now for the Chicago Rush. Uh, there's absolutely no sense of urgency right now for Chicago. And San Jose, I'm sure, is thrilled by this. But even Scipio is just walking up to the line. They've got to move faster. Third down. Going for Scipio underneath. Touchdown. Touchdown, Bobby Scipio. Once again, beating Cleveland Thomas. But again, even after the score, the clock will continue to run. Dan France now on to kick the extra point and hopefully move a little closer and stop that clock. The kick is up and it is good. So right now with six minutes and 10 seconds to play, it is a 13 point San Jose lead. 48 to 35, winner goes to New Orleans. Michael, what are these guys doing? We're testing Talladega, Darrell. What? That's how we do it these days. Ha, you boys come with me.
This right here is a real race car. Man, this is old school. I wouldn't touch that old girl if I were you. Oh, very funny. Old school's been good to me. No doubt, but I'm teaching new school, DW. Which school's better? Go to shopairons.com to find out. Shop errands in person or on the internet for brand name merchandise at the guaranteed lowest price. Nobody beats errands. Official athletic retailer of the Arena Football League, Champ Sports, where sport lives. Introducing the biggest stride in sports drinks in over 30 years. New Accelerate with Protein. Proven to increase endurance up to 29% over your old sports drink. So while others fade, you can stay strong. Sweat smarter. Don't fade. Accelerate. Back in San Jose, six minutes, ten seconds to play in the American Conference Championship. San Jose leading Chicago 48-35. Chicago kicking off. Onside kick here, Mark? Oh, I think you have to. This becomes a possession game, and you've got to get as many possessions as you can, so I think we'll see it right here. France fakes right, goes left. The ball is loose. It's gobbled up, and it goes in for a touchdown by Julius Gant. But wait a minute. There is a flag on the field. If it stands, that could be the game. But it looks like they're spotting the ball on the three. Penalty decline. Touchdown. Offsides by Chicago. No good. San Jose says, we'll take a Julius Gant touchdown. Thank you very much. Well, unlike the, unlike the Rush's offensive possession, there was a sense of urgency to score there by San Jose and Julius Gant. So the one good thing in their benefit is not a lot of time ran off the clock with that play. So they'll still get the ball and a possession with plenty of time left on the clock. But it continues to tick here, Trey. Exactly. Smart by San Jose. They're in no rush. No offense to the Chicago nickname to make this kick. And uh, they're not going to make this kick as the ball is loose. And A.J. Haglund says, I don't want to get hit. I'm just going to throw it out of bounds as the ball went right through the hands of Craig Wheelahan, the backup quarterback. Let's go back to the touchdown here by Julius Gant. It, you got what you wanted if you're Chicago. The ball was loose and up in the air right there, but you couldn't fall on it. And Julius Gant, 6'4", 314 pounds, was able to lumber into the end zone. He was, and that's exactly what you want. The first guy, the first wave goes and knocks the player away from the ball that's trying to receive it, but Julius Gant keeps his eyes on it. Good hands by the big man, and then he rumbles into the end zone. Darren Arbett loves it, and here's something, Mark, that's got to make Coach Hohensey a little upset. San Jose scored to make it 48-28 at 11.07 to play in the fourth quarter. Chicago didn't get that next touchdown to make it 48-35 until 6-10. Almost five full minutes ran off the clock. So that's what we were talking about when they didn't seem like they were trying with any urgency to get back to the line. I think one of the things you have to understand, you've got a backup quarterback in there. So how much time have you worked with giving him two, three plays and saying, hey, call some stuff to the line of scrimmage, but that's where they need to go right now. You've got to get possessions, and you've got to come in and out of that huddle, and even non-huddling, make sure that you can call some plays in the line of scrimmage and get going on offense because time is the essence right here. But understand, the way the rules are set up in arena football, even though you look at the score and it's 54-35, to 35, this game is not over. You can score and score in bunches in the arena league. Jonathan Ordway would love to do nothing better than that right now. Gets a couple of blocks, tries to cut back, but a great job by Phil Glover says, son, you ain't going anywhere. Phil Glover, a, you know what, My, Mac linebacker, he's an Iron Man guy. He's played in this league for five years, six, five, or six foot tall, 265 pounds, pounds. He's one of those guys that's a real leader on this defense, and he's been a guy that uh, on special teams has done everything for this football team. 
Well, with 5.20 to go in this game, this is so unusual for Chicago. The 54 points allowed, tied for the second most they've given up this season. Only the game in Colorado did they give up more points, but they won that game in Colorado. So here we go. Russ Mickner's got to get things going and got to get them going in a hurry. 4.58 to play. Goes to Mager underneath. And again, he's not out of bounds until he's run out of bounds by somebody else. Marquise Floyd does that. But again, Mark, Chicago just walking up to the line. Walking up to the line. There's no real hurry, no sense of urgency. They've got to get this thing going because this clock is more, this is, it's, the clock this is is more of an enemy against them right now than are the San Jose Sabercats. They are walking to the line. They had to take a huddle. 20 seconds have run off since that last play ended. First and 10 from midfield. Going over the middle for Scipio. Scipio calling out a block, and Mager delivers a great one. And Scipio's out of bounds. And again, there's no hustle. I don't understand what's going on with Chicago here. Well, you would think they'd have to have some urgency. I think one of the things they're looking at right now is, hey, we have got to get scores. We can't make mistakes with the urgency. But you're right, Trey. You've got to have a little pep in your step right here. You've got to get up that huddle, get in and out of that huddle, and get going. And there just doesn't seem to be that for Chicago right now. They have a new quarterback in a short week of practice because they played on Monday night. But you've got to find out a way to get faster than this. Mickna with plenty of time goes to Scipio in the end zone. Touchdown. Okay, so they get the touchdown with 3.39 to play to make it 54-41. But at this point, you got to just hustle up and kick the extra point because that's when you stop the clock is when you kick the extra point, not when you score the touchdown. And the clock continues to run. Here it goes. It's running all the way down. 320 right now, and that Rance ball puts it up and good. The other ball comes back onto the field, but again, with 318 to play is when they stop the clock. San Jose still up by a couple of scores, 54 to 42. Take a look at the replay of the score to Scipio. Well, Mikna right here, look at him. He's got time there. Protection's key right there. Has time to dissect the field, and look at the touch. He puts over the defender, into the corner of the end zone. Very nice throw by Mikna right there. Those are throws you have to be able to make. 12 catches, 4 touchdowns touchdowns for Bobby Scipio as always uh, coming up big but Mark you have to wonder how much time have the Chicago rush let slip away from them in this contest they're still down by two scores down by two scores but they have belief they have their three timeouts and as we've talked about inside of one minute that's where you start getting the stop so this three minutes has really become with that one minute warning it's more time than you think it is but I agree with you Trey they need to step up their sense of urgency when they get the ball back on offense you know, it, it could be that, that Mikna, obviously, as a backup quarterback, isn't used to running a hurry up, but at some point, you've got to call more than one play in the huddle, don't you? Well, you either got to call one more, more than one play in the huddle, or you have to have a package at the line of scrimmage that you can call with either hand signals or, or that you can just bark out the signals and say, this is what we're doing, let's go. Um, you know, green, yellow, this, that, and, and be able to give the play to your guys and everybody be on the same page and what they call just on the line of scrimmage. Make your calls on the line of scrimmage. Check with me and let's go. Again, just so people understand, there are still three timeouts for Chicago, and with one minute to play, the clock will stop on incompletions and out of bounds, and if you're the team with the lead and you run the ball, and you do not make positive yardage, uh, also the clock will stop. So there are ways to get that clock stopped and, and get going in a hurry. And we'll see if they try another onside kick here. Mark. Oh, you've got to believe they're going to onside kick this again. They've got to have possessions. So something's coming off the foot of France here. Well, don't, don't kick it to Julius Gant. That's what I would suggest. A little squibber this time. The ball is loose, and it's finally gobbled up by Marquise Floyd. But he takes it back all the way to the 24-yard line, or maybe right at midfield. So, you know what? If you're not going to get the onside kick, not bad to put him at least back to the 25-yard line. Right, and here's where Mark Grieve and the San Jose Sabercats want to take some time. They want to be the ones that are sauntering up to the line of scrimmage. They want to be in the huddle for a while, and they want to make sure that they throw some short underneath routes, little dig routes. Routes, whatever they have to run, they'll stop routes, make sure they catch the ball, get tackled, eat up some clock here, and that's what you're going to see from this offense. Well, you have seen a lot of excitement from the San Jose Sabercat fans. They've waited a year for this game because it was in this game one year ago in this building where Chicago walked in and stole what they thought was their right to go to the Arena Bowl, and now they have a chance with three minutes to play to return the favor. 
Reed throws it underneath to James Rowe. Another reception for him. And again, smart move by San Jose. They should be in no hurry whatsoever. No hurry and exactly what we talked about. You're going to see them throw those little four-yard hitch routes, those six-yard hitch routes, maybe a little crossing route, a shallow crossing route. All they want to do is keep possession of the football and let that clock tick, tick, tick away. And here you see it inside 225 right now. At what point, if you're Chicago, do you start burning timeouts? You have to here inside of two minutes. You've got to start taking those timeouts because that one-minute warning is going to help you out. And this is a great job by Greed. He held up Rowe and said, don't go in motion until we've got less than five seconds left on the play clock. Plenty of time. Throws it to Rowe. Rowe underneath. And again, brilliant move by Greed. They don't need points. They want to run clock. Exactly. They don't need any points here. They just want to hold on to possession. They want to make sure they don't give this Chicago team an opportunity to come back. Well, there you see the first of the three timeouts. Inside two minutes, they called that timeout. They've got to start conserving it, and you're going to see them use all these timeouts to try and get this ball back before that one-minute warning. All right, so with 1.55 to play, it's a first down for San Jose at the 11-yard line. Again, San Jose one minute and 55 seconds away from joining the Columbus Destroyers in New Orleans. Russell Athletic ESPN Arena Bowl 21 kicks off live from the Big Easy in New Orleans on ABC Sunday, July 29th at 3 Eastern. It is going to be one heck of a party, and we should point out the first professional championship in the great city of New Orleans, the Crescent City, since the devastation of Hurricane Katrina almost two years ago. It's going to be great to have this championship in New Orleans. They've got a wonderful facility out there. You and I had an opportunity Absolutely. to be out there, call a game, and watch that city, watch uh, just that passion that city has and and um, the way they're rebuilding that city it's just fun to see and it's fun to be out there with those people who are just wonderful wonderful people and really uh, really passionate about this game as well and there's the American Conference Champions Trophy will San Jose be holding that when it's all said and done they've got a minute 55 to put this away and again another smart play by Greed doesn't have to throw it and again Joe Peters uh, roughing him up a little bit and taking him over the boards but all this pushing and shoving doesn't do Chicago any good as the clock continues to run continues to tick away and they're fighting and and now they take a timeout and they realize well we just wasted about 10 15 seconds they absolutely did and take here you go Reeve getting yanked out over the wall. My goodness gracious. And those walls are in play right there. And that's a little bit unnecessary right, right there. It certainly right is. Right there, that play is over. And, and Mark, not only is the wall out of bounds once you push, but that's concrete he's fallen onto. So there's the wall and there's the concrete underneath. That's going a little beyond where you need to go. No doubt about it. But then what happens? The San Jose Sabercats come over there to protect their quarterback. A little scuffle breaks out. And Chicago Rush lose their head and forget to call the timeout. And I'm sure Darren Arbitt saying why wasn't there a penalty yeah, call shouldn't there? That that's one. my quarterback yeah. you know I'm counting on my quarterback he's got to be healthy I'll tell you what you're right all that stuff didn't do Chicago any good and Greed exactly what you'd expect from a veteran quarterback he knows the situation he knows what he has to do and knows what he doesn't have to do just keep possession of the ball and keep moving and this team is moving into the arena ball he understands this offense he understands the way this game is played he's played it as well as anybody for a very long time Time. And I guarantee you right now the San Jose Sabercats would rather get a first down than put this ball in the end zone. Matt Kinzinger, who's already got a couple of touchdowns, runs that one for a couple of yards. And again, that forces Chicago to use their final timeout. Time now for today's U.S. Army strong play of the game, and it's all on the arm of Mark Grieve. He's done a great job distributing the ball. Phil Glover helping him out there. Ben Nelson's had a big day. Rodney Wright's had a big day. All of them coming off the arm of Mark Grieve, who has waited a year for this moment in this building to get back to the Arena Bowl. They were champions of the Arena Bowl in 2002 when he was injured. Two years later in 2004, they went back and he was the MVP. 
And we're now one minute, 25 seconds away from Grebe and San Jose going back with a chance to win it all again. And how cool is this football team right here? They have just, there's no, no sense of urgency. They're very collected, just walking up the line of scrimmage. They know what they have to do. They're all on the same page, led by Grebe. Third down, touchdown not necessary, but why not have one ball for the road for Ben Nelson. And that, ladies and gentlemen, just may do it. Fourth touchdown by Ben Nelson. You see him creeping into the wall, coming into play, concentrating on the football. Doesn't take his eyes off that great catch by Ben Nelson. He's been the difference maker for this San Jose Sabercat offense. And again, we have reached the one-minute warning. They will make the kick, and then the one-minute warning will be in play. And all these fans here in San Jose that walked out of this building a year ago so disappointed are now one minute away from wiping that all away and relishing in the moment of taking out the defending Arena Bowl champs and moving on to New Orleans. DW, you're going to love the changes that David and I have. All right, David, thanks very much. The cool, calm demeanor of head coach Darren Arbett betraying what he must be feeling inside as San Jose is one minute, 60 playing seconds away from heading to New Orleans and avenging their bitter loss of a year ago when Chicago walked into this building and stole their chance to play for the Arena Bowl title. A.J. Haglund set to kick it off. Ordway back in deep for Chicago. Off the net. Out to the five, and he is smacked down. Rodney Wright there to clean it up, along with James Rowe. Mark, you have to wonder what this organization has been through in the last year in San Jose. Even though they're the winningest franchise in arena football since 2000, even though they won the 2002 Arena Bowl, the 2004 Arena Bowl, they told you they don't feel like they get any respect. And now on the national stage, they have a chance, and they're one minute, 58 seconds away from wiping away all the bitterness of a year ago and saying, we are the very best. This football team feels very much like the Seattle Seahawks tucked away in the upper northwest corner of the, of the continent that nobody pays attention to them. There's an East Coast bias. Nobody notices the Sabercats. And uh, Arnett told me yesterday, he said, listen, we haven't earned anything yet. Dallas was 15-1. Talk about them. The Georgia Force were 14. Do you talk about them? Well, they'll be talking about this team coming into Arena Bowl because this team has shown something today with their resilient nature and the way they battle and the way they've overcome mistakes to take a huge lead right now. Bobby Scipio on the reception there picks up a first down. It is interesting to note uh, Russ Mickna after that reception by Scipio was hurrying everybody up to the line. You have to wonder where that was on the last two possessions for Chicago. Right, that was something they needed to go into quite some time ago in the fourth quarter that uh, they just didn't do. They just refused to do it. Bobby Scipio giving plenty of cushion by the defensive backs, and uh, they're more than happy to do it. Runs it out of bounds, which again, under one minute, stops the clock. 36.2 ticks away from an eruption at HP Pavilion here in San Jose. And when you give yourself up on the wall inside of one minute, that clock will stop right there. Normally you can rebound off that wall and you could still do that, but if you just give yourself up and don't make a move, the clock stops there and it's considered out of bounds. So it's a first and goal from the 10 yard line for Chicago. Scipio in motion, making a looking for Mager. Throws it underneath, and again, he is driven out of bounds and driven out of bounds hard. You know, we talked to Jason Gather before the game, and he had that look on his face that he was more than ready to play this contest. And he said, no other team I'd rather see right now than the Chicago Rush come in here. We have some unfinished business with this team. Last week, they watched that game. They watched the Chicago Rush on Monday night beat the LA Avengers, and they were rooting the whole time for the rush because that's who they wanted to see. Vengeance, that's what they wanted, and they're getting it today. Scipio on the screen, muscles his way into the end zone, and that is good. 
And with the score in the one minute rule, uh, the clock will stop. So that makes it 61 to 48 with 26 ticks left. France will come on to make the extra point, hopefully, and move them a little bit closer. But you have to wonder now if they've just simply run out of time. And there you see the flags being waved. Arena Bowl 21 here in San Jose. Snap, hold, kick is up. And it is good. So with 26 seconds to play, 61 to 49. A reminder, when we are done, Sports Center is up next. Get you caught up to date on what happened in that great game between Columbus and Georgia, as well as a complete recap of what went on here and everything else going on in the world of sports. Phil Mickelson with a solid showing, has a one-stroke lead in the Scottish Open, the precursor to the British Open, the next major on the schedule. Barry Bonds playing in a day game after a night game, trying to get closer to Barry uh, Hank Aaron's mark. Of course, went 0-2 last night, and the Phillies trying to avoid their 10,000th loss. 10 thousand losses in franchise history that's an unbelievable mark and that is that is that's that, one of the ten that's thousand. a big one yeah that's a that's a big matzo ball hanging out there ten thousand franchise losses yes they, they've had a couple of tries already and they've staved it off a couple of times kudos to them staving off it's your ten thousand loss but they did some research if the yankees lost every game between now and i think 2024 they still wouldn't have ten thousand losses in franchise history. That's amazing. It's a big one. That's a testament to the kind of baseball they've been playing, apparently. <laughs> well, it's, it's been rough. Uh, the, the Phillies, of course, won it all in 1980 in the World Series. Philly as a city is starved for a, uh, for a, for a title. I mean, you might remember a couple years ago when Smarty Jones, the racehorse, who was uh, born and, and, and uh, trained in the Philly area, owned by Philly people. They were jumping on that. They're looking for something. It, it has been a while since either the Flyers, the Phillies, the Eagles, the Sixers won something. I think the Sixers were the last championship, I believe, in 82 or 83, the 1983 Sixers. Who doesn't remember the great Mark Ivoroni on that team? Actually, he's more like Moses Malone and, and uh, Dr. J. Still, I do remember Mark Ivoroni. Bobby Jones was on that team. Mo Paul Cheeks. Paul Jones was on that team. He Mo, had Mo Cheeks. Cheeks. I believe Andrew Tony was also Andrew on that Tony team Andrew Tony well. was on that team. All right, enough about Philadelphia. This is San Jose's moment, as they can sense it here. They are ready to explode. The cowbells are out. And one of the great stories for this San Jose team, James Rowe, the outstanding wide receiver, he told me yesterday, listen, my daughter China will be 10 years old on Arena Bowl Sunday, uh, 29th of July, and they have not come out to San Jose. They live in, in Richmond, Virginia. They have not been able to make the trip out to San Jose, so it'll be a big family reunion for James Rowe, and the family has three kids. Uh, what, what a great story for, for James, 13 years old, Zion, Renee's wife, is going to be awesome. And that should do it, ladies and gentlemen. As the clock continues to run, Chicago can't stop it. Their run as Arena Bowl champs is over. And an itch the San Jose Sabercats have been waiting to scratch for a year is now officially here. Cat scratch fever. San Jose is your American Conference champions. They move on to Arena Bowl 21, taking out the Chicago Rush. And what a performance by the offense and the defense in San Jose, Mark. It's been a great football game and a team that felt disrespected. Well, guess what, guys? You showed the nation today what kind of football team you are, the San Jose Sabercats. Offensively, defensively, and special teams, a complete football team, Trey. There you see Kendrick Office coming in for the Ron Jones, who was taken out of this game. For Mike Hohenstein, the Chicago Rush, it ends. But for San Jose, there is one more game to play. San Jose in Columbus will meet in New Orleans in Arena Bowl 21. Our final score here, San Jose 61, Chicago 49. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Up next on ESPN Sports Center, for Mark Slareth and our entire tremendous production crew, I'm Trey Wingo. Hope you enjoyed it. So long from San Jose.